it's Saturday, which means it's time for yet another Salty Saturday Morning. I am your host, Mr. Kadish. Get it right. Coming to you live from beautiful, overcast, crime-riddled Las Vegas uh, from the Salty Nerd Studios. And I am so excited to get to talk to you guys about some fantastic topics, but more so to talk with our fantastic panel of nerds, starting with Matt Vader, 74. How you doing, buddy? Hey, bud. Here we are. Yay! Saturday. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's back. Mike's here. Hypnotic's here. Yeah, it's going to hey. be a fun show. I yeah. enjoyed the crime riddled part. That was that was I really did. good. That was hey really man, good. he's not he's not messing. He's not joking around. This 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 uh this town's going to shit. Quickly. No, I appreciate the honesty. That's all. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. You don't hear it too often. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. But, but we love our crime riddled city. And speaking of crime riddled, let's go to our shield is back. He's here. He's queer. He's our uh, <laughs> defense against everything woke. Our <laughs> Latinx representation, Brian from the podcast. How you doing, buddy? You guys thought I finally got canceled, didn't you? I bet you <laughs> did. You're like, oh, he finally, he finally ate it. Yeah, hey, I'm glad to be back, my friend. It's been a while. Thank you. How you feeling? Because you were sick last week. Uh, I'm feeling much better. My throat's still messed up. I'm still a little tired. You know, but uh, back in the saddle, dude. You know, a lot of people have been getting sick lately. So Jude, Jude's sick. Uh, Alex's entire family got the stomach flu. Like, just everyone seems to be getting sick lately. I think it's because the weather's changing or something like that. Yeah. Change of season. My wife yeah. works for a school, and all those high schoolers are gross. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, my so, joints are uh, loving the pressure change. It's great. It's love yeah. It. So uh, Odin is going to be out for the next couple of weeks. So filling in for him today is the one, the only Mexican Iron Man, everyone's favorite, not a YouTuber. Uh, Mike, <laughs> thank you for being here today. Appreciate you uh, stepping in at the last minute. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I understand that Mr. Brian uh, did not provide sufficient uh, diversity <laughs> representation. I am here <laughs> for that. Uh, I am way more Mexican than he is. Uh, number yep. <laughs> and number two, I want to uh, say hello, Mr. Kadish, M-I-S-T-E-R. Uh, I want to take this opportunity in front of Matt Vader to uh, thank you, Mr. Kadish, for your leadership, <laughs> your vision, and your extraordinary technical uh, and amazing uh, job as the executive here at the Salty Nerd Podcast. You, sir, are an inspiration to nerds everywhere, Mr. Yes. Kadish. I agree with everything you just said, Mike, but I, you don't understand if you, if you feed him. It's, his man. head swells. You're he's feeding really the beast, man. He's I really see it swelling be, right now. He's really hard to be around. You don't have to, you don't have to be in the office with him when you're not around, <laughs> man. It's 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 not fun. It's not no, fun. But, hey, Mike's you know what? Though, but you but you know what? I I but, uh, this is a tribute to all of you. <laughs> is that I've been watching this thing since day one, and I remember when there was like almost nobody in chat in the very beginning, <laughs> and to see the rise of members. The, yeah. the size of the super chats, the size of the audience, and the depth and breadth of stuff you guys have covered. It is an honor to be here. So thanks for having me. Well, thank you for nice. being here, Mike. And thank you for uh, you know referring to me in the proper manner. Uh, that's uh, something that's usually lacking on this panel. And speaking of lacking on the panel, we want to welcome for the first time on Salty Saturdays, our special guest, Hypnotic, the leader of the Bigot Army. <laughs> How are you doing today, sir? I am doing fantastic. I am also in a crime riddled city. So I, like I said, I appreciated what you said earlier. Uh, thank you guys for having me and joining the Salty Nerd podcast. It means a lot to me. And I'm excited, man. I'm excited to get into the topics and talk nerd stuff with fellow nerds. You can never, you can never go wrong with that. Yeah, so. I, I know it's, it's not very PC, but pretty much any Democrat run city is uh, crime riddled at the moment. Essentially, yep. Essentially, no, I mean, there, there's PC and there's facts, and that's that's facts right now. So, oh, yeah. I'm I'm very happy to know that when I get elected to the Senate, I don't have to go and get a new wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to wear that's, anything. Yeah. It's very nice to know that they've laxed the uh, the Frankenstein monsters dress code. So you know that's good. Show, show up wearing your shorts, and shorts and hoodies, baby, and let's go. <laughs> and, uh, but shout it, out to everybody in the chat as well. I see a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah we're, we're we're gonna get to the chat in, in a second. But um, first of all, I just want to say that I recently took a trip to California. Uh -oh. I used to live. I used to live in L.A. You know, because I don't know if you guys know this or not. But I used to work in Hollywood. Oh, um, here we go. But uh, <laughs> but uh, you know. Uh, when I moved from LA to Las Vegas, I was really concerned that I, I wasn't going to like living in Las Vegas, but it turns out I love living in Las Vegas. And every time I go back to LA, 
I'm just amazed at how run down the city has become. Like when I came back uh, the, this past month, graffiti was everywhere. It was dirty. It was overcrowded. I, like, I, I don't understand how people can't live there, can't see just like how the entire city is declining. Well, I've been. This is rampant. I, I'm currently in San Jose, California, in a, in a literally a two-year-old uh, Hilton property. I look outside my window. I can see three homeless encampments, literally. And this is like I'm in a really good area, Almaden yeah. Valley. I just came from San Bernardino, L.A. I'm going to be going to San Diego and Orange County. Hopefully, I'll get to see Brian for lunch again when I get down there yes. when I get back. So I'm basically in, in California for over a month, and I've decided I'm not coming back for the holidays. I've told all my family. So I'm seeing all my family, all my clients, and I just paid six oh nine in la for unleaded mm -hmm. yeah before i yeah. got on the interstate five 609 for unleaded i just filled up my tank in, in south carolina right before i left for 259 premium unleaded before i left no, uh, three and a half weeks ago it's ridiculous yeah, and everybody's nice. stressed out everybody's pissed off everybody's mm -hmm. angry you can feel the tension yep. yeah the, the gas prices here in vegas are up to like five dollars and 20 cents again um but uh yeah when when we were for people who don't live in los angeles like in California, you drive everywhere. Everyone has a car. Everyone has to drive. And so when you have like like over $6 gas prices, that hurts everybody, especially like the, like the, the poor, you know, like working class people because like you need a, a car to survive mm -hmm. in L.A. Like you just can't get around it. Didn't it go but, up to $8 or something like that during the prime of uh, when Biden first got in office? And they were like, I remember reading about California having almost – almost eight dollar gas prices if i'm not mistaken i don't know yeah i, I mean like I'm, I'm sure it's gotten up there i know but, i just uh, know, I know i know that here we're this is a record we've never had gas prices this high here in las vegas it's it's, it's like yeah. five ten it's crazy wow it's nuts yeah. yeah but california is even worse because of all like the environmental taxes mm -hmm. and all that stuff but uh getting away from that before we we uh, go, go to the chat i just want to give um odin a big shout out uh, yesterday, he became the proud papa of a beautiful baby girl, and uh, we're all very, all very excited for him. And I just want to give a personal shout out to Odin because I was just thinking about this the other day. You know, he's been so great in coming on our show and, and stuff like that and hanging out with us. And he was the very first YouTuber that I ever met because um, I remember when I got on Twitter after The Last Jedi came out and I was like going hard against that thing. and I was publishing articles on Medium. I wasn't a YouTuber. I was like Mike, right? I, I wasn't a YouTuber. And I was just kind of getting my frustration about the current state of Star Wars out there. And Odin had a YouTube channel and he was the first person to read my articles and be like, hey, would you come on my YouTube channel and talk about it? So he was actually like kind of the first YouTuber I'd ever met. And, um, you know, uh, he had me on his channel, interviewed me. It was, a, it was a very nice conversation. And he's been a friend ever since. And Odin's just such a genuinely good person, right? Like he's... Mm -hmm. You know, like he doesn't have an ego about him. He uh, teaches children. He's very religious. He's very family oriented. He's just an all around good person. And it's so great to see that, you know, his family's growing and that, you know, he has a, he has his priorities straight. You know, like his, his YouTubing is a hobby. Like he doesn't really yeah. take it all that seriously. He does it because he's passionate about it. And uh, we're very grateful that he decided to become a part of Salty Saturdays and all that stuff. And we do miss having him on the panel. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, give Odin big shout out, uh, big congratulations on the yeah. new baby girl. Yeah, shout out to Odin and his new his new uh, baby girl. Yeah, he named her uh, Peppa Pizza, if I remember correctly. <laughs> no, he named Pine her Pineapple Pizza. Pineapple Pizza. Enjoy pineapple the pizza. no sleep, Odin. Enjoy the no sleep. <laughs> oh, uh, he's been through it before, but uh, Pine yeah, pineapple so. shelf. Pineapple, pineapple shelf. shelf pizza yeah. yeah yeah all right guys so real quick want to give a shout out to everyone in the chat uh, as always the very first person here every single time anthony mark good <laughs> to see you heavy rain in nyc uh, st stay dry my friend we got sage the kangaroo and arc 0606 we got i believe they're part of the hypnotic crew good to see you guys here we got uh cherry cane and trivia queen anima confusa in the chat uh, TGAP Steve, uh, we got Gavin Blackburn, super sticker extraordinaire, Bob Dorsey, one of our salty superstars, the Joker's voice. Uh, who else do we got here in chat? Jeremy Turner, no money G, a toy fanboy. Good to see you guys. We got Rick Lucy, 
Uh, we got Cocho Dragon. Uh, we've got uh, who else here? Forbes. Uh, we got Forbes. We got Studio Lao, 52 movies a year. Uh, guys, thank you all so much for being here today. We got Jillian N, one of our top uh, donators. Very good to see you guys. I uh, got Danny the Dork Knight. We got all <laughs> types of people. I like that one. Yeah, we got all types of people in the chat. Thank you all so much for being here today. And uh, we also want to give a big shout out to some of our big donors. We got William Forbes still at the top with $500 donation in a single sitting. Thank you so much, William Forbes. Your generosity is very much appreciated, as well as the generosity of Scotty Dub, Bob Dorsey, and the Astro Nerd Boy. You guys are fantastic. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this enough, but you know, one of the goals of our live streams and our podcast is to get to the point where Matt Vader and Alex can quit their day jobs and work on the YouTube channel full time. And uh, that's where our passion lies. And that's why we're doing this stuff. Like I've been working 40 hours a week for the past or 40 hours. Yeah. Like 60 40. hours a week. Yeah. Like 60, yeah. 60 hours a week for the past <laughs> three years, trying to get to the point where we can afford to, you know, hire Vader and Alex full time. And so that's really our goal. So every time you guys give us a super chat, every time you guys donate or buy some of our merch or support a sponsor, like whatever the case may be, uh, sign up for a membership. All that money goes towards trying to get these guys full time into YouTube. And so like, we really appreciate your support on that front. And uh, speaking of support, we have our loyalist uh, Joker voice and panelist Mexican Iron Man. These guys are our most consistent donators. Every time we do a stream, they always give us money. We really appreciate that. And our top gifters. So William Forbes is, of course, a top gifter for uh, memberships. But we also have Jillian N and WG. Thank you so much. And our top contributor right now is Scotty Dub. I believe William Forbes is closing in on that uh, distinction as well. Uh, so uh, we really appreciate that. So, guys, if, if at any point during the live stream you want to give us a super chat, we will uh, take the time to uh, read them at the end of each segment. We really appreciate that. But speaking of which, we also have some super chats to get to right now. So the Joker's voice for $5. Hail SNP. Congrats Hail to Joker. new dad, Odin. Uh, Feloniacs would have you think that Ahsoka is a huge success. Nielsen numbers and reality say otherwise. Hashtag keep talking. Yes. yes. Uh, the, the spin machine from Lucasfilm is real, but uh, they can't outrun reality forever, I believe. I want. I need to correct you. One thing, it's not Feloniacs, it's Falunatics. Oh, Falunatics. Falunatics. Nice. Don't be a Falunatic. Falunatic. <laughs> Falunatic. Falunatics. Yes. And Matt Vader superfan William Forbes <laughs> for $20. It's okay, Matt Vader. You're still a favorite to other people. Looking forward to the live stream. Yeah, right on. Indeed. And Mexican Iron Man for $10, just a super sticker. I believe we should have a Mr. Kadish super sticker somewhere. So that oh my god, that would that would be amazing. Why don't we have a Mr. Kadish <laughs> emoji? We, <laughs> we should. We can. I, I, we can go in there this week and put some of these things in there for sure. <laughs> for members only, right? Yeah. And yeah. we have oh salty God. superstar Bob Dorsey for $20. Good to see you, Bob. Embrace the chaos, gentlemen. We need President Camancho. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, yes. Bob uh, suggested a very cool lightsaber duel uh, video that we reacted to for this coming Monday's um, uh, members content on our channel so if you're not a member sign up you get to see us uh talk about that i believe he sent us another one which we might react to in another video but uh, bob thank you so much for those suggestions we really appreciate it and of course we acknowledge danny the dork knight for two dollars did you know that kadish used to work in hollywood yeah. yes i knew that I, I knew that fact very well and we also want to give a, a big shout out to jillian in who just gifted five Salty Nerd Podcast subscriptions to the chat. Thank you so much, uh, Jillian. Uh, that's very, very generous of you, which kind of uh, blows out what I was going to say next, which is our goal for this stream was five new members. Jillian already hit that. So we're going to hmm. go for 10. We're going to go for well, 10 we, new we've, members this live stream. We have 10. We've, uh, we've gotten 15 so far. Because, oh, that's right, because William uh, Forbes. Forbes gifted 10 as well. Yeah. All right. So I guess we're going to go for 20. Is going for 20. Goal? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. 20 new get, get a little out of hand. Get a little out of yeah. hand. No, but we, we appreciate that. And guys, <laughs> if you get gifted a membership, go to our channel and check out our members uh, playlist. 
uh, it has all of our previous uh, members only videos on there. And that's where Matt Vader is at his most raw and unfiltered. So unfiltered. go check that out. Yeah. Exactly. And also, if you have an Apple device, please give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts. We're trying to get as many of those five stars reviews as possible so that the next time Rotten Tomatoes opens up its submissions for official movie reviewers, we can go in there and get credited as official Rotten Tomato movie reviewers. So appreciate all that stuff. All right, guys. So enough housekeeping. Let's get into the news that Guillermo del Toro was going to direct a Star Wars movie written by David Goyer. Did you guys know about this? Nope. Not until this week. I did not. So, uh, by the way, everyone, links in the description to all the stuff that we're going to be talking about in this live stream in case you want to dive deeper into it. But over on Twix, uh, there was a clip from Josh Horowitz, who does a podcast called Happy, Sad, Confused. And he was interviewing David Goyer, who, for those of you who don't know, uh, he was one of the guys who kind of uh, created the or helped start the whole superhero craze because he uh, wrote the first Blade movie with Wesley Snipes, which was, uh, I believe, like the first big Marvel movie that kind of kicked off into the cinematic universe. And uh, he was also worked with uh, David uh, or uh, Christopher Nolan for the Dark Knight trilogy. And uh, he's currently working on the adaptation of Foundation on Apple TV. And so, like, he got on this podcast and he was talking about how he not only wrote a Star Wars movie that was going to be directed by Guillermo del Toro, he wrote a scriptment or a treatment for the origins of the Jedi, which takes place 25,000 years before the first movie. And, and so, like, we've heard that, uh, you know, my favorite director, uh, James Mangold, is going to be directing a movie called The First Jedi, which takes place 25,000 years before the first movie about the origins of the Jedi and the Force and stuff like that. And so it would seem that this treatment that David Goyer written was kind of repurposed by Lucasfilm and given to James Mangold to kind of kick him off uh, for like the idea of his movie. Now James Mangold's probably going to go and rewrite it, um, put his terrible stamp on it and all that good stuff. But I just find it interesting because we've been hearing from a lot of people about how the culture of, of Lucasfilm is not very conducive to um, actually getting stuff made in the sense that you have a lot of big name like writers, directors, producers who want to make Star Wars content. And when they go and they make the pitch to Lucasfilm, they're just like, no, fuck you. We're, we're, we're not interested. So um, I want to start with Hypnotic. Hypnotic, I know that you were telling us that you were com- you've completely checked out of Disney Star Wars, like you just don't care anymore. Right. So um, when you hear news about like upcoming projects and stuff like that, do you just like ignore it because like you just know it's going to be bad? I don't know if it comes from a place of knowing it's going to be bad. I think what it is is that for me, I know that anything that they come out with in terms of Star Wars, this is probably more TV related than movies. But anything they come out with is going to be linked back to what killed Star Wars in the first place. And uh, it doesn't really matter how good it may or may not be. Ultimately, their their final story, their end game, their goal is going to link back to Rey at some point in time. And they're going to continue that notion. Uh, so for me, I just feel like I'm not really interested, you know. I, and it sucks because that's a great writer. You know what I mean? And that's also a great a great director. And I feel like it could have been a good movie. But... It still has to go through Kathleen Kennedy. It still has to go through modern day uh, Lucasfilm. It still has to go through Disney. It has to go through all the people who, like you said, they they probably tell them to go F off. They don't care. Like but anything that's going to be halfway decent or fan service or fan related, they're not trying to actively do that. They're, they have a idea in their mind and they're going to continue forward with it. And for them, you know, the joke is the force is female, right? They They do this all the time because that's their goal. So I, I'm not interested. Like whenever I've had people try to make me watch Andor, they said it was good. It was a slow burn and all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. But it's all going to lead back to what you said you hate about Star Wars in the first place. Um, same thing with Ahsoka. You know, some people say some of the scenes in Ahsoka is good. But overall, it's a pretty terrible, terrible show. And it's because it all leads back to their final goal. And they're going to make they're going to make Rey the shining star, the one who saves the Jedi, all this nonsense, brings the Jedi back, whatever. It's it's not it's not interesting to me. I'm not interested in Disney Star Wars um, at all. And I feel like I don't even know if at this point, if if someone else, another company gets their hands on Star Wars, because I know a lot of people say, well, 
Lucasfilm has to get um has to get sold off to somebody else who cares about the IP. I don't even know if that's gonna save it anymore at this point. I think the image is so destroyed in a lot of people's minds that even if even if Lucas Films was sold off and you have all these theories and rumors about Lucas buying it back and all, even if all that happens, I just feel like people are checked out. A lot of people are over it, they're done, and I'm one of those people, you know. So yeah, you know, you know, it is kind of interesting. I believe Nerd Roddick said said it best, where he's like, "There's there's more bad Star Wars than good Star Wars now." Yep. Like, like it, yeah, it completely is outweighed by the bad. Right. And uh, I want to I want to throw this to uh, Mexican Iron Man because Mike, you are on our Lord and Savior Doomcock's channel quite regularly, and uh, you know he he likes to kind of you know skewer the the Star Trek end of things. So I want to ask you, which do you think is in a worse position now? Is it Star Trek or Star Wars? It's funny you ask that because we just had this. Yeah, I'm on the show every week. And then uh, it's something that comes up pretty regularly about which franchise is in a worse place. And I think that if we look at things numerically versus emotionally, numerically, I think Star Trek is in a much worse, worse place. And I'm originally a Star Trek guy, way more than I ever was a Star Wars guy. Um, the views are down, the watch hours are down, the quality of the programming is bad. Mm -hmm. Star Wars, of course, has always been a much bigger... It's kind of weird. It's like, see, Star Trek's always been a niche property. And for those for that fan base, it's been something that's you know been very a very devoted fan base. And it's imploded. It's gone. I, I don't believe anyone can resurrect it. I think anybody that... And the, what's happening with Star Trek is that anybody that might be able to appreciate what it, the, the core DNA is dying or not interested or just not accessible to the people in power. So that's off the table. Mm -hmm. Star, War, and Star Wars probably could be saved if we could just get Disney, Iger, and uh, everybody, you know, whether it's KK and others, out of the way. David Filoni is a problem. He's not the salvation. The problem that I have, I know we're going to talk about um, Ahsoka as a separate topic today. But the thing is that what's disappointing about this news in particular is that I think where we're at with Star Wars is that great writers and great directors don't have a welcoming, open environment where their creativity and their integrity to the core DNA of what made Star Wars special is able to flourish. And until that culture changes and that ability to flourish, that space is allowed to, for us to get back to what made us all fall in love with Star Wars, then Star Wars is also is doomed to Star Trek. It's just a matter of time. I think the biggest issue with Star Wars comes down to vision. Like Star Wars has been without vision since Kathleen Kennedy took over. Mm -hmm. when you had george lucas at least like he kind of had an idea of like what he wanted to do with the franchise uh when it comes to kathleen kennedy she, she's kind of almost doing what you just said mike where she's bringing on creatives and kind of giving them the keys to kind of do what they want and yeah. oftentimes what they want isn't in line with what the fans want mm -hmm. uh, example ryan johnson you know like he he made the last jedi for him not for the star wars fans so um, it would be interesting to see if, if, like, they actually got someone in Lucasfilm who actually had a vision for the franchise. Uh, I'd like to see that. But Brian, you know, you're someone who, yeah. you know, deals with both the Star Trek and, and the Star Wars franchises. And Star Trek has also had a very difficult time getting, like, movies made and stuff like that, mostly because, you know, J.J. Abrams is terrible. Um, but uh, when it comes to Lucasfilm, from what we've been hearing... There are a lot of very talented people who want to write the ship, so to speak, and Lucasfilm just doesn't want to work with those people. They want people more in line with Kathleen Kennedy's legacy and, and all this other stuff. Um, so what's your take on this idea that we can't get a Guillermo del Toro Star Wars movie? We can't get, uh, you, you know, uh, very original stories anymore. It's just all, you know, going backwards in time and uh, dealing with characters like Hypnotic said that people just don't enjoy. Yeah, and the problem the problem is though, even if you could get people, let's say they they bit the bullet and they got, you know, really good directors that have the ability to write the ship and they haven't let us let us down yet creatively. Um, I like what uh, I'm sorry, what Hypnotic said. There still is no vision. There's like no correct vision. You, I think, in any any one of these big franchises like Marvel, DC, Star Wars, Star Trek, you need to have some kind of 
and I hate to say it, but I'm using I'm going to use it as a verb. Some kind of Kevin Feige. Um, I was uh, Kevin Feige is not doing great right now, but you need someone um, who understands what, what the the lore, the franchise, who respects it, and then who can guide the various movies and TV shows. Um, and there's going to be better, some better than others, sure. But overall, they're all going to fit together in a way that 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 makes even the ones that aren't great still required watching. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, Star Wars is not required watching. It's boring. And uh, I don't really <laughs> care what happens next because ultimately we're going to end up with, you know, uh, <laughs> with uh, Space Leia Jesus and all the stuff that happened in Episode 8 and 9. Exactly. Just not, not really interested. And no matter how you you push it, no matter how, what you put put on it, all these prequels and everything are just telling me more and more that I don't really need to be here. Um, so that might be one way. Maybe just start making stories that happen after that, so that we can just put that crap that we didn't like behind us. Maybe that's a possibility. Yeah, you know, Matt, um, mm-hmm. there were there was an interesting point in the latest Ahsoka episode where the only good character, uh, was it Blaylock? Baylock? Balin. Uh, uh, Balin, Balin Skull. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Balin Skull, uh, played by the late Ray Fisher, uh, mm-hmm. R- RIP. Um, he, ha- he said that, you know, the cycle just repeats, you know, Rebels Empire, Rebels Empire. And uh, it almost felt like a meta commentary about the current state of Star Wars because they're so creatively bankrupt. They can't think of anything new to do. I almost think that they need to do a next generation thing where they just hop a hundred years into the future of this galaxy and reset everything, like get rid of all like the, the sequel trilogy characters and start, uh, start fresh with like a whole new premise, almost like what they did in the, in the books with the Yuzong Bong and stuff like that. I think that it'd be really interesting to kind of do that. What's your take on the current state of star Wars and why do you think Lucasfilm is just so resistant to moving forward with the franchise? Um, bro, that's, that's a, such a heavy loaded question. I wouldn't even begin to know how to answer it. Um, I, there's, there's a, there's a comment in the, in the, in the, uh, that I highlighted just a minute ago. It says they kind of, has got me just thinking ever since I posted it up. It says more people seem to love one piece more than star Wars. Now star Wars is absolutely dead. And my brain started thinking about Maybe he's right. Maybe the Star Wars generation, which is, um, to be frank, my generation, um, maybe we just don't care enough anymore now that they've completely ruined this franchise by trying to make it more palatable or whatever to these new generations that are coming up. These new generations that they're trying to that they're trying to market these things to for some reason aren't interested in star Wars because they have their own things. They have one piece. They have things like uh, Naruto and all the Japanese stuff. And they have Harry Potter, you you know, they have all kinds of stuff that was made for them. So why would they need to go back and get invested and watch stuff that their parents made them watch? Because, you know, their parents thought it was cool. My kids, they don't give a shit about Star Wars. They've all seen Star Wars because dad made them watch it. But it's not their thing. My daughter is a huge, huge Harry Potter person. And I try to explain to her, I go, honey, Harry Potter's just Star Wars with wizards and, and kids. No, it's not. You no, know, yes, it is. It's the same thing. Dumbledore's Darth Vader. It's all the same shit. You know, it's 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 oh, crazy. Yeah. Same thing. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? But that comment from Mr. Murray has just got my brain just just exploding right now. And uh, thanks, Jeff Murray. I know that's that's crazy. It just I don't know something just kind of like triggered in me. I, maybe the problem is is they're just they bought a dead franchise to begin with. You know, the the, the people that spend money on Star Wars were 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 aging out. We're doing other things than than watching Star Wars all the time. You know. And, and now, they- I, I, bro, I think they could have, they could have, we could have been the, the, you know, people ushering the next generation in, yeah. but instead they've turned us off. But, but when she went into the whole, the forces female stuff and, and they just started making 
live action cartoons, which is what all of these series are on television. That's they're, it. They're, they're, yeah. they're just they're just extenuations of the Clone Wars and Rebels and stuff. They're just cartoons with people in them. They're, they're right, written yeah. the same. They're acted the same. They're structured the same. It's all it's all cartoon garbage. For and I, they, and they, I, they, I, they I used to love cartoons, but I don't I don't I don't like these. Yeah, I I like the Clone Wars and Rebels for the most part. I did. I've, I've watched every single episode. I, I would watch them again, but they're cartoons. Right. There need there needs to be, they they need to up their game for live action series and movies. And and that's I think it's part of the problem is, is they're making cartoons with people. They're not making actual mm-hmm. movies and television. You you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a it's an interesting thing. Can I well, piggyback on something really quick? Yeah. Sorry. Um, the, so somebody asked, um, before, um, how can we, um, you know, is it like savable Is star Wars savable and why they don't want to, um, kind of take the franchise in the right direction or whatever the case may be. I just think that unfortunately you can't have these good writers and these good directors have any kind of, they have no freedom, right? So in order for you to make something creative, you have to actually have creative freedom. You don't have that. You know, you don't have that in modern day Disney. You damn sure don't have that in modern day Lucasfilm. Um, and someone like Kathleen Kennedy is not exactly interested in creativity. She's not interested in in what's going to be the next big movie that's going to make fans want to come back or whatever the case may be, original Star Wars. They, It is impossible for creativity to thrive in a creatively stifling environment. And that's what Lucasfilm is. Lucasfilm right now, they're more focused on, okay, if you bring a story to them, does this story um does the story showcase everything we needed to showcase right not does is this story good is it going to take the franchise in the in the right direction no does this story have this does it have that you can call it checkboxing whatever that's what they're focused on and if it does then that's that's the only time they're going to listen to you so chances are when you have these good writers and directors trying to actually make something interesting um chances are whatever they were making wasn't exactly beneficial to their overall um narrative i guess you can say if, if that's the word i'm looking for so that's what i think is really that's why i have no hope you know when when people <laughs> say can you save it no you can't save it because in my opinion the rot goes very deep you can get rid of kennedy okay people she's been fired 40 times now it's from by i've lost i've lost count right like in the rumors or whatever you can get rid of kennedy you can get rid of everybody in charge right now it doesn't matter these people have trained other people below them you realize that like they have they have people ready to come up and take their place when you get rid of them. And that's because the rot is deep in those companies. So there is no saving it. In my personal opinion, I could be wrong. And everybody's different, obviously, but I just think it's impossible. When that when the rot goes that deep, there's just there's just no way. There's no way. That company, you can get rid of you can get rid of every single CEO or or top branch person in Lucasfilm right now, and they'll have somebody to replace them that thinks the exact same way. In my opinion. Yeah, can I add to that real quick? That's why I think yeah. Star Trek is not as bad off as Star Wars. I know, I know that Star Trek is suffering because and really bad numbers and all the stuff that Mike mentioned is correct. But we like the future of Star Wars. We've already been there and we don't like it, and now we're living in all these prequel past adventures. Well, the future of Star Trek, we've been there, we do like it, and we're still living in these prequel past adventures. There's still a chance mm-hmm. narratively or canonically that we can get to a place that we like with Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek Discovery. No, 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 that doesn't count. That's like <laughs> that's like three thousand million years ahead. I don't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Plus, you guys well, gotta remember too. Star Wars has more of a cultural impact too. To kind of piggyback what uh, uh, Iron Man was saying before um star wars has a much more cultural impact than star trek star trek was always that niche kind of like following in my opinion and and i think that the fall of star wars is going to be much greater than the fall of star trek even though star trek viewership wise and numerically speaking might be bigger right now and uh, but i think it's bigger right now simply because star wars does have that much bigger overall normy i guess you can call it following um that will always go see a star wars movie just because it has a name in it you know so that's my that's brian Brian, when it comes to star trek the burn always has happened and uh, (laughs) the 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 kelpian tantrum basically destroyed the galaxy no it didn't and and the cells don't need to be connected to starships anymore. Ah, no 
no, that's not true. So, this is all canon. All canon. Also, as a total joke, I think Vader totally offended every Harry Potter fan earlier. By the way, yeah, we want to get to that for for ten dollars. Okay. William Forbes says, "I love you, Vader. I really do." But Harry Potter is not Star Wars, no sir. Similar <laughs> themes, maybe, but most stories have similar themes. However, you are entitled to your wrong opinion. LOL. JK. <laughs> oh, whatever, that's I, fine. I, I don't I, know. I, man. I appreciate that. You know, um, Harry Potter bothered managed to actually put together. Um, eight actual good movies, so <laughs> instead of just three. So yeah, I know, I'll give yeah. you let you chew on that well, one for a minute. I think it was a Dumbledore comment. Yeah, well, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean uh, Dumbledore was Darth Vader. I misspoke. I was meaning the other, the bad guy. Voldemort, Dumbledore was Voldemort. was Obi Wan. Voldemort was yeah. Darth Vader. I'm a Harry so, Potter psychopath. Just so you're aware, yeah. I don't know if it's I ever good. made that clear. Yeah, so it's okay. I um, I I like Harry Potter. I enjoy it for what it is. Uh, I'm, I think it's a really cool series. Yeah. So. I mean, I've had people tell me Harry Potter sucks. I'm just I, all, the only reason why I'm mentioning it is because I thought it was funny that you said it was. Um, I, I already knew that you comparing Dumbledore to Darth Vader was going to get people yeah. in the chat. That's why no, I was no, like, I, oh, it's going to be good. Yeah, I didn't mean Dumbledore. I, mean, I just, I just I mean, think I mean, Harry I mean, Potter for me was just I was just too old when it came out because I just I don't really cool. care. That's well, funny. I got to, I got I, I'm sorry. I got I got to appreciate Harry Potter through my daughter's eyes. And that see, my kids weren't born when it came out, and I wasn't, and I was already thirty when it came out. So I was like, every every year, every single year, my daughter's birthday, she would take me and her mother to a Harry Potter movie because they Mm. always kind of came out in correlation with her birthday. It was it was kind of funny how it worked out. Now, one thing I can appreciate is that that killer soundtrack. I'll never get past that soundtrack is amazing. Both Mm -hmm. franchises uh, follow the hero's journey. Instead mm-hmm. of lightsabers, you have wands. Like it, right. it's very similar in terms of like structure and elements and stuff like that. In fact, people have done video essays comparing the two, and they are very, very similar. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, Whiskey Jack for five pounds. Hypnotic on point. TV and movies are not an artistic medium with these corporations anymore. Appreciate so, that. Uh, yeah, a good one for Whiskey Jack. All right, guys. So talking about live action animation let's talk about episode six of ahsoka um so i find it interesting that uh, an episode in a series named after a certain character has the character on screen for maybe a minute before they completely disappear for the entire episode um i will say that one good thing about this episode was i really liked seeing like uh the return of thrawn and like <laughs> how, how fucked up his his uh stormtroopers are and stuff like that. Um, I've always been a big fan of Thrawn. I always thought that, uh, you know, the fact that he's like arguably the most intelligent strategist in all the Empire uh, was, was very cool because I like those like super smart bad guys, um, you mm-hmm. know, like Moriarty from Sherlock Holmes and stuff like that. Um, I was not a big fan of how the actor portrayed the character in this. I know that it's Mads Mikkelsen's uh, brother or something like that. Uh, who's playing Thrawn? I just don't feel like he fits the role. He's got like this dad bod, you know. Thrawn's <laughs> supposed to be like like very like lanky and kind of like uh, muscular and stuff like I, that. I like the dad bod. I finally feel like I can <laughs> like see myself Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but but overall, I found that this episode really hollow because nobody likes Sabine. Nobody mm. wants to spend forty <laughs> plus minutes with her. The idea that like she was like upset that she was in a cell uh just didn't make any sense to me at all um and also her reunion with ezra for people who didn't see the finale of of, uh rebels or doesn't don't know who ezra really is it just felt like like uh if if you're not up to date on all the cartoons that scene rang really hollow for me Mm -hmm. and the fact that um basically sabine screwed over an entire galaxy just to have that moment where she's reconnected and, and the, the idea that they can't even get back to their own galaxy because she's going to be stranded there as soon as Thrawn leaves. Um, like there, there's just so much going on in this show that just doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Um, so like it's s- kind of s- sprinkled in with, with cool moments, but those cool moments are instantly negated if you stop and think about the plot for more than two seconds. And so, like, that's why I find this show very frustrating is because, like, I want to like it. There are elements in every episode that I want to like, but they just make it very hard for me to do so. So, Matt Vader 74, what was your take on episode six of Ahsoka? 
Um, you know, I'm I'm right there with everybody else. This show is still boring. It's still too long. It's still drawn out. Um, I I agree. The the <clears throat> the uh, whole Sabine screwing over the entire galaxy so she can go find Ezra is is kind of a weird thing. I don't know. Maybe they'll address that later. Maybe she's it's all just her learning a lesson in her Jedi powers when she can't be a Jedi. I don't know. It's very strange. Um. <laughs> Dad bod Thrawn, he just doesn't. I mean, he's got the voice because he is the voice from the the, the cartoons, mm -hmm. you, you know. But what they should have done is they should have just you know Darth Vader that guy. They should have gotten another actor that looked the role and had Lars voice over the, the dialogue. That would have been perfectly okay. I, nobody, I don't think, would have had any issues with that. Dad bod Thrawn doesn't really cut it for me, even though. I appreciate it. You know, it's like, oh, it was kind of weird to see a fat schlubby dude, but not, not Thrawn. Let's not do Thrawn that way. It's kind of, that's kind of dirty. Um, you know, as a, as a uh, watcher of all of the shows and, and granted, it's been a long time since I've watched any of these episodes of, of rebels and clone wars and stuff, you know, that they're going back to. Um, I appreciated things like the witches you know, um, I'm still trying to look into the whole um, night trooper thing. I think all the troopers, I think they're all undead. I think they're all raised zombies that the night witches have have uh, done a thing to. You know, there's there's something significant about all that red tape and and the, you know you notice all of their all of their armors cracked and beat up and dirty and grimy, which is the most you know what, what I see when I see that is I see a whole giant. Um, set of dark troopers that are going to be on the toy racks that nobody's going to buy, which is unfortunate because they're going to be really cool looking. Um, but yeah, um, I like the visuals. I like the visuals. I like some of the music, but that's, that's all I can really say. I mean, it was an epic shot when I'm coming in on that shot, when that, when, when the star destroyers coming in over, over the castle, it's really cool. It's very star Warsy. It's very neat. You, you, you know, um, but the, the story itself and the dialogue is not, keeping pace with the visual style of the show. And I think that's kind of where I have a lot of the problem with this. You know, it's like I said earlier, they're making animated shows with live people and you can tell. And, and that's what is the, the biggest problem with the show. Filoni makes cartoons. He's not good at making live action shows. So. All right. Well, Brian, what was your hey. take on episode six? I didn't watch it. You, you had one job. Wow. One job, Brian. Fire. He's, actually, he's actually got four jobs right now, I think, or something. I, I, have, I, I literally have, actually have three jobs right now. Um, like two real jobs and then YouTube. Um, no, really, I, I'm just, I'm being honest with you guys. Uh, I turned it on last night. I was going to watch it uh, when I went to sleep, and uh, I don't know what happened. It was about three minutes in, and that's that's it. That's that's. Yeah. And then I woke up this morning, and the, sh and we were, and the show was happening, so I, I ran out of bed, so. Well, you know, that's cool. We don't have to spend a lot of time on it. You know, it's just yeah. everybody else in the world, in the world of YouTube. The show is so goddamn boring. So, I don't, yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, Mexican Iron Man, what was your take on episode six? Uh, guys, um, there's a lot of criticisms about the show. I, for one, think it fucking suck or freaking suck. Sorry, just cursing your show. Oops, my bad. Oh my uh, it has been an absolute. I pleaded with my overlord, Doomcock, to get out of watching this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, he basically told me that, that I can go F my Mexican burrito and I'm watching it all the way to the end. It is awful. It is awful. The only glaring thing that I, the, you know, it's like what Kate is, or, Kate, or um, not, uh, Matt, it, when Kate, uh, blah, Matt, when Matt Vader earlier said to me and Kate in the panel that he felt represented, I too feel represented <laughs> in one way in this series. And that is because of Space Chihuahua. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like my people, or at least through a Chihuahua, will be through a, will be represented in the future. Now this this show is awfully written. You can't buy me my loyalty with cute little graphics. They lost me when she spun. They lost me back. I was out of this thing when she spun, did the cartwheel with a lightsaber in space. Oh, I was out. There. Awful. But yeah, you know, it, it's you know, and I look at one of my one of the channels that I helped. Uh, get off the ground was Echo Base Network, and and I'm huge into that community. Like I'm one of the originals over there, and it's been brutal. You know, there's people that love this thing, and here's the only analogy that I can get. There's some people 
that want to go back to their high school reunion and they want to feel the good fee fee fee. They want the good fee fees, you know, mm -hmm. remember when, they, you know, they're now 380 pounds, but they remember when they were quarterback, <laughs> you know, of the team, you know, and they were banging the smoking hot cheerleader. And maybe that's what these people like. Now, I never saw Rebels. I saw the first one or two episodes and didn't finish it. And I barely remember the Clone Wars because when I saw it, it was it was just a few years ago when I broke my leg and I was on Percocet and, and Oxycodone. And I don't even remember how I saw I am completely lost. Ezra showing up meant nothing to me. I don't even know who I, I the only thing I remember about Ezra is I think he has a weird lightsaber. He did. It was it was it was like a gun with a lightsaber yeah, thing a gun on out it. of it. But I am I I I feel like I am watching, you know, the watching this reminds me of watching Star Trek Picard and watching my franchise beloved uh -huh. die before my eyes. I literally feel like I'm <laughs> I'm just looking at this crap and I'm just like how can you spend so much money and give me such poorly executed story? How can you possibly? Because I know how much these mother efforts are spending on this crap. It's hundreds of millions of dollars. And I do not understand for the life of me. Oh, but, but good news, guys. I know how to do an Ahsoka impersonation. There it is. <laughs> Solid. Wow. Oh, my God. That's, that's spot that's on, bro. That's Honestly, amazing. pretty solid. Wow. That's really good. Tell me a story. Tell me a story, Mike. This. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna engage in mental masturbation on this great channel of talking about. Well, they did this and the dooby dooby da and the dabby dabby da. No, I, I, no. It was. I. You know what? It. The, it felt like I was watching a three-hour ep. It, it just. It was. It, this is grueling. It's like literally, it's worse than homework. It's like eating cauliflower. Is what watching this is like. Oh, Sci-fi right. cauliflower. Ahsoka is sci-fi cauliflower. And by the way, I will say this. Did anyone catch the ultimate irony for Disney wanting to be like all about diversity and like somehow the the high standard is now Ahsoka the white? I'm just mm -hmm. saying. Nah. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a Gandalf reference. Hey, Mike, uh, I, got a, I got a question for Mike. Yeah. Um, when you're effing your burrito, what is in the burrito? <laughs> Beans. Uh, I don't know, but I asked I asked Doomcock twice, and him and Harvey told me that I could that they said "f you, mofo, you're watching this stuff." So <laughs> it's like you fried beans. You put you put some put some. Uh... <laughs> Dude, that Sabine character is intolerable. God, she reminds me of Raffi. I think I I think uh... I like Raffi more than Sabine, and I didn't think that could ever happen. What about the dog? Did you like the rat dog? The well, it's a, it's a space chihuahua. It reminds me of my little bambino. Yeah. So yeah. you know, I mean, that's what I mean. Like right now, he that's that's that's. I hope I hope space chihuahua gets his own series. I mean that that I might watch. Mm. Yeah. What about the turtle Ewoks? Dude, the no. ones with the uh, the shells on their backs. Turtle people. No. They were cute. No. I like man. turtle. Where's Tom <laughs> Connors? I like turtle. Turtle. <laughs> I like turtles. <laughs> turtles. Oh, it'd be, like it'd turtles. be great if they were all ninjas. That'd be fantastic. Oh, that I would mean, be pretty cool. It's just, yeah. I mean, uh, this place is. It's and they were so named after famous painters. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think I'm really mad because I saw One Piece, and I don't know jack crap about. An I hate anime. I hate manga. I don't know jack crap about One Piece, and I got into that, and somehow those mofo's got me sucked into that world, and I couldn't stop watching when I started. And I say to myself, well, I don't know jack about Rebels. I don't know. I don't remember all of the Clone Wars, at least apparently not enough that it matters. And I can't get into the series yet. Here's one piece. And I couldn't I, I like I couldn't stop watching it over two days. Yeah. One piece was great. Yeah, it's a great show. Because they're focused I, I think, on entertainment. And I think that's, that's why I'm less tolerant of what I'm seeing in Ahsoka. Because I hate anime. I mean, I literally, I cannot stand manga and I cannot stand anime. I hate them. I just, the whole thing just annoys me. I can't stand it. Can't stand. And here I am watching this live action and I got burned on Cowboy Bebop. I actually bought all of original Cowboy Bebop DVDs and watched it all to prep for the live action. Got burned. So I was sure this was going to suck, and I loved it. I loved it. So anyways, I know we're not talking about One Piece right now, but still, yeah. I'm just saying. Well, uh, Hypnotic, you know, you're proudly not watching any of Ahsoka. So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, your decision to basically forego uh, watching any uh, Star Wars television? Well, like I said before, I mean, it, it comes down to the fact that I know, I know where all of this is going. And the, you know what annoys me the most? the the biggest clips from all these new shows are usually always clips of something that will give you like some sort of nostalgia or member berry of the original actual good star wars you know like everybody was talking on on 
on Twitter about Ahsoka and the clip of Anakin returning and her fighting him, whatever. And, and that's all people were talking about. I'm like, and I'm thinking the entire time, like, you're only talking about this because it brings you back to the actual stuff that you actually like. You know what I mean? If, if she was fighting anybody else, would this clip be going viral on Twitter right now? Probably not. You know what I mean? Um, so I just, for me, I don't, I don't care. I, like it always goes back to this is just going to return to the same crap. They're going to remind you how much men suck. They're going to remind you how much the force is female. They're going to remind you about all this stuff that nobody wants to hear. And they'll give you little member berries here and there to try to keep you interested. Or they'll do what they did with Kenobi where they'll kind of bait and switch you. You know what I mean? They'll they'll use a name on a TV show where they know they're going to draw an audience of people who want to watch the story of that character only to give you something completely different and tell you that they subverted your expectations and all this other nonsense. So I'm just, I'm kind of over it. Like, I don't, I don't really care. And for me, I'm a big manga and anime, you know, super fan. Like that, that's, that's what I watch all the time. So, and I thought for sure one piece was going to suck and it didn't. So, you know, and they didn't because they were focused on entertaining you instead of telling you how much you suck kind of a thing. So and, that's and the, they that's stayed the true to the source material. Um, yes, for the most part, but they did, they did do their typical things though. They did their, their race swaps. They, they did all this other stuff, but, but they did it with the blessing of the mangaka, the original, you know, Ichido mm -hmm. said it's, it's, it's okay. And he wanted actually that person to do the role. So it's like, okay, at that point, but again, the big, it was still entertaining, that, man. It was still entertaining. Yeah, that, they, that's, that's the key. They did the race swaps. They had a trans person playing Kobe, all this stuff that would, would normally get people up in an uproar. But the reason why it didn't happen is because in the TV show, they didn't tell you about it. Like nobody, nobody was, it's not forcing it down your throat. They're not doing these little jabs. You know what I mean? Like they're not, they're not doing, uh, what, what was her name? Yeah. Jennifer Lawrence, when she's like, oh, the suit will look better once it fits a woman kind of a thing. You get what I mean? Like it's not, you're not constantly getting it thrown in your face. And that's the difference. And One Piece proves that people actually don't care about this nonsense so long as you just focus on entertaining people. That's if true. that's your focus, that's all that matters. <clears throat> but if you're going to take this stuff and weaponize it, that's when people have a problem with it. So, all right, real quick, we have a super chat from Darth or from Matt Vader super fan William Forbes for ten dollars. It's all good, Vader. I love you, man. You have facts. Eight <laughs> movies are a lot better than three good ones. We all still value you and your opinions. Keep it coming, man. That's right. Facts, baby. Facts. <laughs> facts. Don't get don't get we used to it, facts. William. Vader never uses facts. <laughs> I used it's to just facts. Make, I like to just make stuff up for sure. Yeah. Uh Fluffy Panda member chat, member for five months. Thank you, Fluffy. It's too early to have to look at Brian. I mean, hi. <laughs> this guy. This guy. Oh, Panda. I mean, oh, I almost forgot. No, I almost forgot. <laughs> almost forgot. Ooh, good to be back. Hashtag never forget. Then we got another super chat from William Forbes for $10. I was curious to see other people's thoughts about Asloka. There are some that are so hard for this show, it's a little much. Um, like it, like it can do no wrong. Mex, Mex and Iron Man, you are 100% right. So, Thank uh, you. Yes. Uh, Mike is usually right. I don't know if people know this or not, but uh, that's why he's not a YouTuber. Because YouTubers are very rarely right. I need yeah. to go out. I need to go out on YouTube and look at some of these, uh, these the, these few channels that actually like this show and see what they're saying. Oh, dude! I, over at Echo Base Network, we've lost, I think, two or three hundred subs in the last couple weeks. It's because been brutal. it's because been, why? Because people can't. The thing is, like, look, I might have this very negative view of the show, but if someone likes it, I'm not going to hate them. But these. Mm -hmm. Only maniacs remind me of when I was a Snyder bro. I'm a recovering Snyder addict, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, my life became completely unmanageable as a Snyder bro. Okay, I was a full blow. I was one of those guys. I was on Twitter. Yeah. I'm harassing people. I'm posting multiple reviews of the same movie. I mean, you know, the trilogy. I mean, I probably got like 30, 40 view reviews that I've posted, and it's all me. Okay, so nice. I was one of those guys. I was one of those Snyder bro maniacs, and I'm in one recovery. Of those guys. Yeah, one of those guys that Tom Connors can't stand, whatever. I'm, but I'm recovering. <laughs> and so I know the mentality. But the thing is, if I disagree with you, you don't have to hate me personally. And I don't right. hate anyone personally that likes this stuff. But right. they're but they're literally like, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm 
I mean, the thing is to say that I don't like women is just ridiculous. I'm going on yeah, three dates. I love women. Week. I love yeah. women. I got three dates in one weekend out here in California while I'm traveling. I mean, no, I love women, and I'll you know yeah. all colors. I've, I've I feel I've caught a little bit of heat because I said something like I'm looking forward to Rebel Moon coming out. It's like, don't come after me because <clears throat> it's a Zack Snyder movie, and I I like the trailer. You know, whatever. Yeah, but. I don't see if yeah. Why why can't you <laughs> like? I'm looking, look, I'm looking forward to Rebel Moon too, and but yeah. I mean that's part of my recovery. I gotta mm -hmm. take my Snyder and do it. Anyway, I'm changing the subject. Sorry. Yes, Sorry. Let people so let good. people like what they like, man. Yeah. yeah. Yep. At the end of the day. Sorry, Mr. But... Kadish, sir. It's okay. Uh, Fluffy Panda for ten dollars. Hey, Mike, that's an insult to cauliflower. Ahsoka is nothing filled with more nothing. All because they don't want to pay Zahn for the Thrawn trilogy and push their BS. This is very true. It is yes. very true. Like, like if if, you if know, JJ had, had had just adapted the Thrawn trilogy for we're episodes, done. you know, seven or uh, you know, seven through nine, that would have been like everyone would have loved that. Everyone. Two billion dollar movie. Yeah. H, all, Easily. All Easily. Yeah, they had they had the roadmap. They yep. had it. Right there. In front of them. But, Crazy. Uh, I, I I agree, Mike. You you definitely insulted cauliflower with your uh, with your analogy. I like broccoli. <laughs> William Forbes for ten dollars. I'm just waiting for Asloka to ruin Ezra as an evil man, bad person. He was easily one of the best characters in Rebels, and the man haters can't have that. They well, they already desexualized the relationship, didn't they? It was never like sexualized. That's what people don't understand. They didn't have a romantic relationship in this series. It's more like a brother sister kind of thing. You know, I, I, I it's like, what did you expect them to do when they met? A hug? I mean, a, big, a big hug. They're not going to like give a big old bang, gross tongue kiss. <laughs> and it's just like, bang. that's not ever what I expected. But, you know, whatever. Bang. I mean, it's weird. To it's be weird. fair, yeah. in certain states, that might be a sexual relationship. Yeah. So. Wanted to ask you guys, like, how long did it take them to get to the um, get to the other galaxy? Because it, it feels like it only took them a couple hours. But uh, were they in space for months? Like, how long did uh, it take to translate that? Honestly, I don't, don't even know if they know. Like Disney, you know, it's just it's like okay, we're just gonna go from episode five to six, and that's good. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's it's fine. It's all good. Oh look, Alex is here. <laughs> yes, Alex has uh, showed up to do some work, which is always nice. All right, guys. So let's talk about the big thing that everyone's wondering about, which is Russell Brand getting demonetized from YouTube. Now, th this is a story that's kind of evolving as it goes along. Uh, for those of you out there who've been living under a rock, basically Russell Brand has been char or accused of all types of terrible things that have to do with women. Um, and basically, uh, because of this, he's getting systematically taken down by media organizations and, uh, and governments and stuff like that. So basically, like uh, the BBC has been pulling pretty much every piece of TV that has him on it. Um, they've been canceling his, uh, his comedy specials, his TV shows, um, his management company and his agency has dropped him. Basically, he is being systematically taken down. And this come, this past week, YouTube completely demonetized his channel, right? And, uh, you know, he has a very popular channel on YouTube where he's basically just commenting on, on news and, and stuff like that. But uh, YouTube is still running ads on the channel. He's just wow. not getting any of yeah, the that's, money that's, off of the ads. Cool. And in a statement from YouTube... Basically, it said that if a creator's off-platform behavior harms our users, employees, or ecosystem, we take action to protect the community. When a creator is suspended from the YouTube Partner Program, they are prohibited from using a new or alternate channel to circumvent our enforcement decision. And here's the th interesting thing about this is like uh, YouTube is claiming that they're not censoring brand because he can still post videos. He can still, you know, talk about it. He just can't make any money off of it. That's bullshit. <laughs> when you're demonetized, you're throttled. You're not promoted anymore. Yeah. Well, but they're not they're not blocking his videos. They're not preventing him from uploading. He can that still use the service. But yeah. but, uh, but that yeah, means people but, have to actively look for him, though. 
But uh, the, the more interesting part of this is that, so YouTube's big on brand safety, right? Like they don't want advertisers to accidentally associate their brands with something that could hurt them, which is why we have like the adpocalypse and the demonetization stuff and things of that nature. Uh, however, they're not blocking commercials on brands thing. They're still playing commercials on there, but YouTube's keeping all the revenue now. Like they're just not sharing it with brand. Um, and, uh, so like it doesn't have anything to do with brand safety. And the crazy thing about this whole thing is that brand has not been officially charged with a crime, right? Like he hasn't been arrested. He hasn't been arraigned. He hasn't gone to trial. These are just accusations. These are anonymous women who were tracked down by news out by, you know, like reporters. And in the documentary that uh, kind of set this whole thing off, the women don't even appear in the documentary. They're played by actresses who are basically narrating uh, the statements from these women who don't have their names associated with these statements. So these are completely anonymous accusations. And the, uh, in fact, it kind of came to a head this week where the uh, British government, who has like a council on naughty thoughts, I guess you could say, uh, basically sent uh, veiledly threatening letters to all the major social media platforms encouraging them to basically de-platform brand. And, uh, and uh, we saw uh, Elon Musk come out and say no, basically. But yeah. the CEO of Rumble came out with a very, very aggressive statement where he basically said, fuck off. We are not uh, censoring anyone on our platform, especially someone who hasn't actually been charged with a crime. So uh, a lot of people kind of took fire at YouTube's decision to do this because it's basically like, hey, you know, like people are just saying he did this stuff. There's no actual proof that he did it. In fact, the, the witnesses aren't, you know, charging him officially. Like you know, there's no official investigation that's been completed. And it kind of goes towards uh, the broader cancel culture because we've seen this happen before. It happened with Trump. It happened with, um, you know, s some other YouTubers. And in fact, uh, we had a situation very recently with Nerd Roddick where he got a copyright strike on his channel. And, uh, you, you know, uh, so th there are various ways in which people take uh, or target individuals who are exercising their freedom of speech or saying stuff they don't like and uh, trying to target them for cancellation. We have, thanks to the Twitter files, we know for a fact that the Biden administration specifically targeted the Daily Wire because they didn't like what they were saying and tried to get them completely deplatformed. So I want to throw this to Mexican Iron Man to start off with. Mexican Iron Man, what's your take on the whole brand situation? And was YouTube right to demonetize him? Well, I'm going to have a hot take because uh, I was falsely accused of some stuff years ago. It's been about a decade since it happened. And it was a girlfriend that I broke up with that just went absolutely <clears throat> nuts uh, that didn't want to be broken up with. And uh, I was able to, because I had receipts, show that uh everything that she was alleging which which ranged from dv to other stuff was complete lies and thankfully i had text messages emails and other stuff that i was able to draw upon um in order to you know get the da to drop my case and that was pretty like i was looking at potentially jail time and it was complete lies complete fabrication and uh but the way the court system is set up is basically I had to prove that I was innocent versus anyone proving that I was guilty. Yeah. Even and and it's two it's dual. It's uh, you know the, the, what's happening to Russell Brand is that he doesn't even have to worry about the 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 DV family court issue or even the criminal issue. He's got an even more direct and immediate issue, which is cutting off his finances and and destroying his reputation because reputation is currency and 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 reputation leads to leads to money and so it's basically it's like this guy could be the it, it, it's like when did we turn into when do we go we turn into a culture where um like all of a sudden you can cut off how someone makes money and what people think of you just ba based upon allegations and they're all anonymous i mean at least i knew who my accuser was you know i mean mm -hmm. in this case this guy is like fully anonymous and i think it's you know it's uh the matrix is real um as a long time i mean i'm no longer but for a better part of three decades i was a pretty significant donor to the democrat party in, San in silicon valley including santa clara county helped get a lot of state and local politicians elected with a lot of big checks and i know how the machine works and the machine is real 
now with social media coming in, which is uh, basically a pretty hideous tool to govern how someone makes money, you could shut people down for any whimsical reason at all. And Section 230, the uh, Title Two, the the 230 um, federal law that's in place is the biggest problem because. I mean, he can't even sue these people. I mean, it's kind of like YouTube. This is another reason why you know, there are many reasons why I say I'm not a YouTuber. This thing this week is for the reason why I'm not a YouTuber. Not because I'm worried about someone saying, oh, Mike, you know, 10 years ago was accused of this or that. You, you know, they didn't go F themselves. It's because I refuse to live in a place where I can't be free and I can't control my life destiny. And that is what has happened to Russell Brand. I mean, this guy's had, what, what did he have? Six, eight, seven million subscribers or something? Like some um, ridiculous number, right? 6.65 million. Six and a half million subs. And this platform is still running ads and making money off of him. But they have cut him off at the knees over allegedly something that happened before. I mean, no, I'm not like, a like, like Like 10 to 15 years ago is where these allegations are coming from. Right, right. You're right. And like all of a sudden they come out of nowhere. If they were real and just, then why weren't things filed back then? You know, and uh, I mean, this is just this is just an absolute outrage. And I don't know, you know, being out here in California has been a, been an interesting experience for me because I, I relocated to South Carolina two and a half years ago. I come out here and I see a bunch of people that are be used to being pushed around. And I ask I'm asking people, my family, friends and clients that are still out here. Why are you still here? And I ask them about things like gas prices, freedom, crime, everything. And you know what I get overwhelmingly? I get delusion. I get people like, well, I just hope that I don't get mugged in the street. Well, I just don't go out as much as I used to. Well, you know, the gas prices, you can pay them. You just got to cut back on other things. I get a whole laundry list of things that I've, that I've been hearing for three or four yeah. weeks. The, the weather's really good. Yeah, the weather's <laughs> really good. Yeah, right. But you know what? You don't go out anywhere. You don't do anything. <laughs> You're so fat, you don't go surfing, you don't go hiking. I mean, I just like you know, you order you order Uber Eats all the time, and and you know, you don't go anywhere, or do anything except your yeah. diabetes appointments. So yeah. you know, and so what I'm wondering is like, when are we as a society? When are we as fans going to stand up and say enough of this shit is enough? When are the attacks on white men, conservative and otherwise, going to stop? When are the racist comments going to stop? And when are frivolous attacks like on someone like Russell Brand going to stop? Yeah, everybody's like, wow, it's really sad that this happened. But I see a whole lot of other people in his space that are around him being kind of like, well, I hope it doesn't also happen to me. Uh -huh. Bullshit. Stand up. Yeah, you, you know, it's interesting. Like we have a, a friend of the show, Andy Signor, who was a, accused kind of like how you were a uh, Mexican Iron Man. Uh, and it almost destroyed his life. And luckily, through the court system, he was able to basically prove that the woman uh, was was making false claims. And, you know, mm -hmm. he's since recovered from that. But, you know, like it was a very hard time period for him. And we've seen stuff like with the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp stuff uh, again, where she basically gaslit the entire world about, you know, her situation with, uh, you know, uh, you know, DV and stuff like that. And uh, even more recently, with uh, Danny Masterson getting sentenced to prison um, and convicted of, of sexual assault, um, what a lot of people don't know is that the first time around when he was you know, um, tried for that, it was a mistrial. And uh, basically, there was no physical evidence that what the claims were happening were actually happening. <clears throat> but this time around, the judge basically said, OK, you can bring in experts that will say you know, like there's evidence of this stuff happening, despite the fact that there was no actual physical evidence. And so he was actually convicted off of the testimony of quote unquote experts, who basically said he did this without any actual forensic evidence to back up their claims. And so, uh, you know, hypnotic, one of the interesting things about this whole Russell Brand situation is that nobody came after him when he was an environmentalist wacko, right? Uh, but the minute he starts speaking the truth about pharmaceutical companies, about the government, about lockdowns, <laughs> about all this stuff that's absolutely 100% confirmed to be true. Um, the minute he starts popularizing that notion to his, his group of followers, that's when they start investigating him. That's when they start coming after him for his wild and crazy behavior back like right. 10, yeah. 15 years ago. So what's your take on this whole thing? Do you think that there is a conspiracy in the British government to take him down because they're scared of him? Um. I would say, and, and I've said this before, I haven't even had a chance to do Russell Brand videos yet. Uh, I've been meaning to, but, you know, this this entire thing, you can call it a political hit. You can call it 
whatever, really. It's very obvious that whenever you see these things happen, and it's funny you mentioned Johnny Depp because the entire time I was listening to you guys, I was thinking this is Johnny Depp like 2.0, just to a more extreme. Um, but simply put, I, I don't take, I don't ever. I mean, you can say believe all women, all this other nonsense. First off, I never, never, ever believe that notion um, for anybody. Never believe anybody until you can. They can prove what they're saying, especially when it comes to allegations. I just find it interesting how these are anonymous women. They they don't want to. They don't want to say anything. They waited 20, 15 years, whatever, to say something. I just find it interesting that a lot of women are actually coming out defending Russell Brand and some of the stuff that women are saying. Is very true you know it's is these women probably had no issue sleeping with him 20 years ago while he was rock star or whatever the hell he was doing and now um it just seems awfully convenient that all this stuff comes out right around right before an election year it usually always happens right where they start going after specific targets that just have too big of a voice right they can't they can never openly come out and silence someone completely just right off the bat with no story behind it whatsoever because that's just too on the nose so what do they do they always uh either dig up someone's past right or they try to uh do a um do a uh a reputation hit where it's and for men it's always it's almost always the same sh stuff for men right so it's always uh sexual allegation based uh from some woman 10 15 yeah. years ago that randomly says this and all of a sudden your entire life is ruined but it goes to show that these big tech companies and, you know, kind of speaking on Rumble too. these big tech companies uh, with us just say with the exclusion of Rumble, they all are just waiting for that moment. They're waiting for that moment with certain people. Right. And Russell Brand was one of those people where the moment they have the opportunity, it is going to be a mass strike on this guy. Right. They're just waiting. They're waiting for him to F up. They're waiting for him to whatever. And if he doesn't mess up, then they're going to say, well, it's getting to the point now where we have to fake him messing up, in my opinion. So they get to the point where, OK, this guy is just squeaky clean. There's nothing we got. We need to drum up something fake and take him out because we can't just take him out. We have to have a reason. So for me, these stories of women 15, 20 years ago is nonsense. It's all nonsense, nonsense in my opinion. It's obvious that this is a political hit. He's not the only one. He's not going to be the only one. You're going to see this pop up in the next few months all the way until the end of the election. You're going to start seeing more silencing of, of certain voices that are just too big. And it's just all part of the ecosystem. It always happens every three, four years. Every three, four years, it, it, it's time for sexual allegation stories. Why is that? It just doesn't. It, it's well, after a while you start to well, yeah, have it's to question. Elections, man. And right. all, it all tracks. No, I know. I'm saying it as a rhetorical question. Like it, 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 after a while, you can only... Um, you can only pretend not to notice before you're kind of forced to notice. And it starts to uh, it starts to happen more and more as time goes on. Social media has made it more prevalent in people's lives. They can they can see the BS for what it is, you know, and and don't get it twisted. This this crap has been happening for decades. All right. The only reason why we're noticing it more now is because information is more prevalent and readily accessible. That's the only reason why it seems like it's happening more. But. Trust me, these political hits, these these character assassinations have been happening for a very, very, very long time, I, especially with I, men. I feel like the people that make these accusations are going to have to be very careful because what they're doing is is they're making Russell Russell Brand stronger right now, as far as I'm concerned. His name is out there more right now than it ever was before on his rise to prominence with this, with this stuff. Um, and you know, you're right. I, I do feel like anybody who has a big voice like Russell brand that speaks against the establishment that the Biden administration and his allies, um, any, these people are going to start, they're going to start trying to take them down. You know, when's this, when's this going to happen to Tucker Carlson? I'm waiting for any day for them to some, have some allegations come out against that dude. Um, oh, it's coming. Joe, Joe Rogan has stated just like this week, I think that said um, he's going to support uh, that Kennedy dude. If they're not going to play fair with him, you know, you get a hundred million Joe Rogan supporters voting for Kennedy. That's trouble. That's, that's big trouble for, for the establishment there in Washington. Yeah. Um, you know, so they're going to do everything that they can to try and silence these people. And I, and I feel like, it's 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 crazy. It's just crazy, you know. And you can't tell me that this isn't 
these aren't political hit pieces because it's when these people start yeah taking taking like when, things at at the at the establishment in washington the stuff right that when, these, these uh, things start happening it's when crazy. muscle brand was a raging liberal having mm-hmm. sex with anything that moved he no was problem. perfectly fine nobody yeah. had any problems with him no no they it's, actually was, rewarded him they gave yeah, him money yeah. And, and yeah. movie deals and TV yes. spots and and mm-hmm. and, and the, the the thing about Russell Brand is like he's always been very kind of upfront about his his wild you know kind of like lifestyle and so it, it's no surprise to anyone when when they're like you know allegations made but right. uh, bas- basically these allegations came out of nowhere in fact one of the accusers one of the women who accused him of of SA um, basically said that uh, you know the guy texted him uh, Russell Brand texted her said come over to my place for sex and she was like i'm not interested and he kept texting her said just come over come over let's have sex let's let's have sex and so she goes over to his place at 3 a.m af- after getting tons of text messages say come over to have sex and when she gets there she finds that he's got another woman there and he's like come join us and she's like no i'm not into that and then they have sex and then she leaves <laughs> and then uh and it's it's like hey at what point after being texted for a booty call and going over at 3 a.m., do you think sex isn't going to happen? Like, at what point does the accuser have some kind of responsibility? There, there was one accuser for, of Russell Brand who basically said, I always thought that our relationship was consensual, but now I'm thinking that it might not have been consensual 10 to 15 years later. It, it's like, you know, upon further reflection, I think he might have, have you know, assaulted me. It's um, right. So let's remove yeah. his ability to make any yeah. money. Yeah. So think- Brian, that that that's what I want to throw to yeah. you because you you've been on the on the wrong end of a YouTube demonetization thing yes. before as well. Yes, I have. And it looks it looks like there's a coordinated effort to prevent Russell Brand from making money so that he can't defend himself from these allegations. Um, what was your take on why YouTube demonetized? And do you think it's just more hypocrisy because they've done this before with other people? Yeah, no, I, I, I do think that if you're not making money from like, like, look at it from his perspective, um, he's not making money. And when he does have to defend himself from these charges, um, now he's got to dip into his own pocket. It might be easier just to hang up the hat and take a year off, you know, uh, which is coincidentally, oh, an election year. And right. you know what's interesting is anyone can go to Google Trends and see hashtag Me Too, hashtag Black Lives Matter, hashtag, hashtag BLM. You can see these things trending. And it's so crazy how it always starts to trend around this time and it heads into the next year. And it's every four years you see this giant spike for all these keywords that they, that, that, that they <laughs> utilize since 2008, man. Since 2008, you can see these giant spikes every four years. So from his perspective, I mean, maybe just take a year off and, you know, I'm going to go spend time with my family instead of trying to fight charges with zero income coming in. Even if he's wealthy, maybe it's time to hang up the, sp- hang up the spurs before I go broke trying to maintain my pirate ship that is now leaking because of all the holes they put in it that didn't exist before it would make sense i mean like from a business perspective it would make sense all right well i can't this is not a fight i can win so i'm just going to take a year off and i'll come back eh, in 2025 and a half when no one cares anymore and then i'll fight it then and they won't care then i'll get remonetized blah 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 and you see it every election cycle it's like you have all these outspoken skeptics um right wing a lot of conservatives a lot of libertarians that are speaking out against the system the established system and rhinos included by the way like i'm sorry republicans you're not you're not off the off the chopping block here there's a bunch of yep. pretty bad idiotic stupid republicans that should be spoken out against as well as democrats so you have these skeptics these libertarians these conservatives that are speaking out against this, these insane hypocrisies that are coming out from our government, like the online safety bill in the UK. Like, I'm sorry, that is outright, just straight up criminal censorship. Yep. And and it's 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 happening, and it's happening right now, right at, right around the time that that he that the guy who should, would be talking about it the most is getting demonetized. Right. Well, 
when this stuff happens, they don't want them talking. So in, when the election starts to come up and these bills start to go past, and you're gonna and and the people that would inform you on who are who you you should vote for or why you shouldn't vote for this person because they're supporting the online safety bill, et cetera, et cetera. And then fast forward after it's all happened and after they've gotten their way and whoever gotten whatever established Democrat, Republican, whatever gotten in office. And then, you know, the foot is off the neck and you can get reapplied. I've seen it so many times where coming up to that pivotal year, all these important voices that speak out against the bullshit are completely silenced or pushed down or distracted with crazy demonetizations and lawsuits and just insane stuff. And then the second all of it's done, the, the foot is off the neck and they can start cycling back into the system again. And it's happened over and over and over again since I started paying attention in 2008. And you can look at Google Trends and see the spike every four years. Every four years. Like clockwork, man. It's crazy. I'm just waiting for Google to shut that down. When, when enough people can, can, can actually go see these trends, eventually they're going to start manipulating that data too, I'm sure. Well, uh, you know, Matt Vader, what what interests me about this thing, particularly with the targeting of Russell Brand, is that a target wasn't put on his back until he started calling out the pharmaceutical companies. Mm-hmm. Right? Like he was calling out, you know, bad wars. He was calling out, uh, you know, both sides of the aisle politically, all this other stuff. But it wasn't until he started targeting like Pfizer and Moderna and stuff like that, where, uh, you know, all of a sudden, uh, investigations were being done into into his past. So what's your take on this? Um, I've kind of stated my take. I think it's all just a big hit piece for somebody who has gotten a voice that people listen to. You know, somebody that can be uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, somebody who can be an influencer I guess more to say as far as people, what people feel about these big pharmaceutical companies and, and politics and any kind of thing that can make the, 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 the public perception of anything change. You know, he has a big voice. Um, you know, same same for these other guys like I mentioned, Rogan, Russell Brand, uh, Tucker, uh, you, you know, uh, any of these guys. You know, they they have a large influence these days in, in modern, with, with the modern ways we get our entertainment and, and stuff, you know, um, these podcasts, these, these channels, these are the new radio. These are the new television shows. Nobody watches TV. I don't think very many people listen to AM radio talk shows anymore. We, we get our stuff this way now. Yeah. Um, YouTube and Spotify. You you know, the, the Rush Limbaugh's, the, the, those guys are, they had their place, you know, they, they were the, people that kind of ushered all this in, you know, the, the, the other dude's voice. I never saying, I'm not really saying Rush Limbaugh was another dude, but he, he had a, an audience and these kind of people are, are the same way. They have an audience too. And I think these, these new guys are even more influential because these people that listen to the people that listen to these guys, I think we're more likely to act on our, our thoughts when we listen to these kind of things, if Russell Brand says, you know, go do this, I think he has a large part of his audience that will go do whatever he wants him to do. Same with, same with the other guys, you know, um, you, you know, if, if Joe Rogan says, Hey, I'm going to vote for, for, for Kennedy in, in, in the elections, um, that's going to take a large chunk of people away from both the Republicans, but more of the Democrats when it comes to the election. You, you know what I'm saying? It's going to it's going to be a spoiler, and um, it's it's just it's crazy, you know. So they're good. These people are going to they're going to try to take these people out, and if they have to do this by drudging up a bunch of bullshit from 15 years ago, then that's what they'll do. It's just it's the playbook. It's what it's the only game. It's the only trick they have. They they've done it to Trump. They 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 do it. All the time, you, you know, we, some porn star is going to come after Russell Brand as soon as he gets clear of all this stuff. You, you, you know, um, it's just it's a lot of it's just the same old stuff to try and take down people who have influence. And it, it sucks. It's 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 no good. I don't think it's right. I don't think people should be able to charge somebody with a essay 15, 20 years later. It's nonsense, you, you know, so whatever. 
Yeah, and yeah. so I, and someone asked me, "Hey, well, why is there not like uh, um, a statute of limitations on 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 like sexual assault and stuff like that?" Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I, it's it's hard to be on the side of like, oh, you know, uh, statute of limitations on SA. But I gotta say, like, at what point? The, even if the statute of limitation is thirty years, like, you gotta give it some kind of limit. Because mm-hmm. you at some you cannot wait thirty years to then decide you're gonna come out and and blow someone up because then at, records are so shoddy at a, after a certain time and memories are so foggy that just the allegation alone without a conviction will will destroy someone's all, life. All you gotta do is be be uh, accused. You, you right. Know, it's like you, you brought up Signor earlier, right? Just real briefly. And, you know, every time that he comes on our show, which is not that often, but we've had him in the studio a couple of times. Um, you, you know, if he was on this show today, there would be people in our chat right now. And there might even be anyway, just from me mentioning his name, that they're going to talk mad shit about Andy and accuse us of having a rapist on the show. You know, it's it's nonsense. And it's just... It is what it is. You can't be well, helped. I mean, all, all you all you got to do is 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 accuse somebody, and they're and they're ruined forever. Yep. Yeah. Th- it, this it all bullshit. started with this all started with Kavanaugh, right? Where the Democrats mm-hmm. basically trumped up false allegations from like when he was in college, which is like yeah, like 30 and they were false. The they ended up being yeah. false. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the the woman basically said like I seem to remember kind of that this is what happened, and uh, and from that point on, it became like a playbook that the opposition does to try to take out the people who speak out against them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, find and, a few people from their past and just make crap up. Well, they don't even have to be from their past. Like remember there Maybe. were people coming out against Kavanaugh that he had never even met. Um, but uh, hypnotic, uh, y- you know, the idea that all you need is an accusation to basically destroy someone's life as opposed mm-hmm. to any physical evidence, as opposed to any corroborating witness statements or anything like that. Um, and the fact that YouTube will sign on board with those accusations, even though it's off-platform behavior. Mm-hmm. Um, like, is this a, a scary new world that we're living in? I don't I don't think it's a new world at all. I think this is something that has been going on for a while. We're just seeing it more publicly, in my opinion. Um, and there is a new level to it. I think, I think it has reached a level that was impossible without social media. And uh, I guess what you would call cancel culture now. But I think like the one thing that's so annoying about all this is that the people who do these accusations, they, they never they never get any sort of repercussions for their actions. And I think that's probably the most frustrating thing when, you know, you could just look at someone and know that they're lying and they you know that no matter what happens. Right. This person just accused somebody else of doing something 20 years ago, no matter what happens, whether it's proven they were lying whether it's, you know, proven Russell Brand's innocent, whatever happens, you know, they're fine. You know, you know that that person who just tried to ruin someone else's life, Mm -hmm. whether it comes out to be true or not true, you know that they're going to be fine. And that's the most annoying thing for me, because at what point does accountability become, become a thing, right? Like when you were, we live in an age where accountability is not a thing. Everybody's always trying to blame someone else for something, their, their, their problems. Oh, the white man's holding me down, this, that, whatever. Like they're always trying to blame someone else. And it's really, really frustrating because you see this victim mentality rolling in people's minds and it's, it's getting worse and worse and worse as time goes on. And I think um, as a platform, well, you mentioned YouTube. YouTube is going to do whatever YouTube wants to do. So in YouTube, you know what YouTube shills for. Everybody knows what YouTube shills for. This is why we try to do alternatives in the first place. This is why alternatives pop up in the first place. We already know that. So like YouTube demonetizing Russell Brand is probably the least shocking thing out of anything that was mentioned in, in that whole <laughs> that whole like the section. Um, but I think like, just to kind of piggyback what uh, Mr. Kadish said, you know, like the, the woman, right, who was texted five, six times. You know what I mean? Five, six times. Oh, come over for sex. Come over for sex. And she's like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. And then you went like right. Like you went over to his house. So you mean to tell me you mean to tell me those text messages controlled your legs and maneuvered you to yeah, Russell Brand's on. house and then you got there 
And you're trying to tell me when you got there to Russell Brand's house after saying no five times that you said no three more times. And then you did it anyway. And then at that point, you went home and said, yeah, no, I didn't really want this. Like, what? at what point do you take accountability and say, you know what? Maybe you kind of did want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of like I'm not trying to defend someone who was a little pushy because obviously some men are pushy. But my thing is, like, he didn't physically take you from your home to his home. You know what I mean? Like he yeah, didn't, dude. That's a, that's it, like going to Burger King after saying one too many commercials, and then getting mad well, at Burger King. Well, well, well right. also, what girl goes over to a booty calls house at three a.m. and doesn't expect <laughs> right. to have sex? Like you're, you're like you're, you're, you're going over a dude's house, <laughs> a very, uh, and not only just a dude, right? You're going over a popular man's house. You're going over a celebrity's house. You're going over and, a guy living had, the rock star life. She you know had had sex with him before, right? Right. Like, this wasn't the first time. Right. So it's like you didn't get teleported there. You know what I'm saying? Like you you actively your your heart in your body pumped blood through your veins to move your legs that your brain is responsible for to another person's home who actively told you every single thing they plan to do. And then you did it anyway. And you want to convince everybody else that you said no. I'm like, you know what, dude? You're 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 full of crap. Okay, like, again, I would use much more harsher words if this was my channel, but you're you're completely full of it. And at some point, you have to sit there and reflect within yourself. And again, they don't want to reflect within themselves. This is the problem. These women, they don't want to do that because reflecting within themselves realize that they're going to realize that they had a little bit of a whole moment, right? And they don't want to. They don't want to admit that. <laughs> Right. The, no, nobody ever wants to sit there and say, you know what? That was probably a little slutty. You know what I mean? Like nobody wants to say that. So they'd rather say, no, no, no. He forced me to do it. He, I told him no six times and somehow my legs just opened. Like, no, it doesn't. Fuck I'm sorry. Anyway, no, go, go. It doesn't. It thing. doesn't. It doesn't work like that. You get what I mean? So when I hear these stories, it really it really is just I kind of laugh and it's kind of sad because I remember like years ago you would hear these terrible stories and you're like damn that's kind of sad now it's just like all right i can't wait for the real truth to come out like all right we got the headlines we got the nonsense story all right great all these allegations are out give it like three months and we're gonna find out the truth somebody was paid it's kind of like a juicy smoothie situation right where it's like the story is just so juicy and so obviously bs that you know the truth is gonna come out right like, there's no way in hell you mean to tell me this man walked around with a noose around his neck because he felt a certain way like there's just Again, these stories are just so <laughs> out there, oh, and they're so out there to the point where it's obvious that somebody had to think it up. Had to think it up. You know what I mean? Like you, you ever hear a story someone tells you, and you just know, like, dude, did that really happen? You just thought that shit up. You know, like it, you, you thought it up in your head. It's the same thing here. And these, I feel like these women were paid to do a political assassination yeah. on. Uh, also, Russell considering Brand. considering the fact that we we have tons of women that have had sexual relationships with russell brand coming out and defending him saying like this is not the russell brand that i know you know that you know i had a relationship with exactly you know, like, but that's the it, thing it, they don't they don't want to admit that oh you know 20 years ago maybe they were feeling a little hoish and they wanted to go to a rock star's house and have a little bit of a gangbang so now they realize <laughs> 20 years later that was pretty that was pretty probably not a good idea and uh now they're trying to make some money off of it you know what i'm saying and if you really if like why are you anonymous too that's another thing too like if you're if you want to make these sexual how is he supposed how is he supposed to face his accuser you know like you, that's the whole point of the legal system face your accuser everybody gets their day in court well the, yeah. the, the uk legal system is very different from the one we have here in the states but real quick oh, we got bob enough. dorsey for 50 dollars. this is the authoritarian playbook matt this isn't new this is why the salty nerd podcast should set up an alternative payment system well, uh, we were just talking with Brian about alternative payment systems, and nobody seems to want to use them. <laughs> yeah, it don't work, man. I said I set up a whole web web page with it where you can uh, you can tip and watch the stream and chat in real time. I set up my own little YouTube, basically, um, and uh, it's our Streamlabs page, Streamlabs page, and it uh, very very few people ever frequent it, and. We've had entire shows where no one went went to not not a single person went to it at all out of hundreds of people. So I'd be I'd be yeah. curious to know what people in the chat what other alternatives that they would be willing to use personally. You know, just 
for my As own someone knowledge. who's probably a, a member to more channels, than, I mean, I'm a member <clears throat> to a ton of channels, and I've mm -hmm. produced a ton of channels in the last four or five years. No one's going to go, they, they overwhelmingly don't work. Unless you're mm -hmm. like someone with a massively huge following and you think you can right. bring people over like Nick Ricada, which is so yeah. rare. Good luck with that. So, but I just yeah. want to say, Mr. Kadish, as a subject matter expert, uh, I can attest that when you uh, text between 12 and 5 a.m. and she comes over, she probably knows what's going to happen. So that I am a subject matter expert in this area. <laughs> yep. And based upon my multiple experiences, yeah. Well, that's yeah. that's I mean, another I, thing too. It's like you want me to you want me to believe either your ridiculous story, or you want me to believe that you are that stupid. I don't know which one is more insulting, right? Like I don't want to look at you and believe that you are that stupid that that you thought that going over someone's house at three a.m. who's a rock star was going to lead to what you're delivering groceries. Like, what are you doing? It's obvious, right? Like I try to have more faith in humanity's intelligence, but you know. Clearly, well, at a certain at a certain point, personal responsibility does have to come into play. Uh, real quick, uh, and also Bob, like uh, you know, if if there are people out there that want to support our channel directly, just get in touch with me. We can set up some type of like you know system where you don't have to rely on YouTube to hundred percent. Um, Fluffy Panda for two dollars. These see you next Tuesdays are making grape and sa jo a joke. Yes, uh, it kind of loses its impact when there are so many false allegations out there. The the people who lie ruin it for everyone. It's always the case. And another two dollars from Fluffy Panda. Used to be you had to run for office to get this type of treatment. That is very true. And uh, now you just need a, a YouTube channel, and, apparently, or and, and endorse people that they don't want you to. Run, they don't want to run for mm -hmm. office. Yeah. Or 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 take a medication that's not approved by the uh, mainstream. Oh, uh, man, Fluffy that... Panda for five dollars. Go ahead, bro, uh, Matt. I, I was going to make an ivermectin joke, but it's, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Look at the culture now. Women are bragging about their body count, selling their body online. Guys are going celibate. Turn them down and get accused too. Uh, yeah. Uh, how many guys have been called incels while women are making millions of dollars a month starting <laughs> an OnlyFan and going on the whatever podcast to talk about uh, how hard it is to meet like a good guy when they're uh, selling their bodies for sex? uh it is kind of backwards isn't it i find it interesting uh, but again it goes back to that whole accountability thing right so they mm -hmm. know what they're doing they know that they're trying to actively use men to get what they want and then when they suddenly get used or whatever now it's a problem right it's just it's just weird but again it accountability doesn't exist in this culture anymore you know and and, and this is why we have all these issues is because nobody wants to admit when they're wrong anymore Nobody wants to self-reflect anymore. It's always someone else's fault. Your life sucks because of this person, that entity that doesn't exist. These, like, you still have people out there claiming to be fighting for rights. And then when you sit with them and you ask them, what rights are you fighting for? Nobody ever has an answer for you. It's always just, yeah. well, you know, if we're, we're, we're marginalized. How are you, mar how? What rights are you actively fighting for that nobody else has? You're just a bigot. Thanks. I already, yeah, no problem. Whatever. It's just <laughs> fucking stupid. Sorry, excuse my language. All right. So uh, l l let's talk about something a little bit more positive here. And this is something Please. that Matt Bader specifically wanted to talk about, which is oh, I uh, forgot about this. The, the idea that uh, there's unused Lord of the Rings footage enough to make eight hour versions of each movie uh, to be shown in the theaters for its anniversary. And this, this all comes from a video from MythWest that Matt Vader watched uh, talks about how much unused Lord of the Rings footage actually exists. And apparently there is quite a bit. And so Vader, I'm just going to uh, hand this over to you and let you oh. kind of go off on this one. Okay. Well, I just thought it was an interesting video I, that I, I randomly saw come up on my YouTube feed. And this guy was talking about all of the unused footage that Peter Jackson says is, is stowed away by the, the studio and some underground vault in the mountain in Nevada somewhere. And they were basically talking about how he, for the 25th anniversary of the movie, if if the fans wanted it, he would make like a big super cut, right? So what this guy did was, instead of making a eight hour long movie to put in theaters, which you know, which would be a rough go, that would be a, that would be a rough rough go. I would go watch it, but it would still be a, a thing. Um, there's been a precedent set with with uh um 
Zack Snyder and his Justice League, Mike, that you, these directors can take their 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 babies with with like uh, the the streaming places uh, support Max in this case, I believe, and they can make a supercut and they can make an eight episode long super movie and they can just put it out in episodes like like they did with Zack Snyder's Justice League and, and you know then we get the vision the, the director's entire vision and what what they what he was talking about on his video is is Peter Jackson doing the same kind of thing but with with the fellowship of the ring on its 25th anniversary and I just thought it was a fantastic idea it's like who wouldn't want to see that the 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 entirety of of Peter Jackson's supercut put out in hour long episodes on 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 HBO Max. I think it would be fantastic. You, you, you know, you, it would destroy I believe Amazon and their silly take on 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 their Lord of the Rings thing that they got going and it would give us all of us Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings fans an absolute gem of a show. You know, you know, and now I I just think it would go over really well. It's something I would be able to get behind and support and i would love to see it you know the the super super duper director's edition maxi cut of the fellowship of the ring and then he could probably do that with all the other three other two movies as well so i don't know it's it just seems well, like a really neat thing well we put up a poll um on uh the chat it says would you watch an eight hour lord of the rings movie and 67 percent of chat has said yes yeah so really? I, I know I told you when when you were uh, kind of uh, going through this uh, with me the other day in the office, I was mm-hmm. like, dude, I'd sit I'd sit in a the theater yeah. for eight hours to watch a yeah. Lord of the Rings supercut. Yeah, totally. All right. Uh, so um, that was an interesting video. Go check it out. By the way, everything we talked about in the live stream is linked in the description if you guys want to dive deeper into it. But uh, one thing I want to uh, talk about with you guys right now <laughs> is this idea that uh, the Marvels is super expensive. Apparently, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to go in, into some Marvel talk right now. So uh, Forbes released this article that basically said that Disney spent over two hundred and seventy million dollars to make the Marvels. And what's interesting about this to me is, first of all, there's no hype for this movie. Nobody cares that this movie's coming out in basically two months, right? Um, it's a sequel to uh, Captain Marvel, and people are like, ooh, Captain Marvel made over a billion dollars at the box office. Mar, mar, mar. Um, but nobody really liked Captain Marvel. Like, like that, was, that came out at a time period where Marvel was still considered good. It was, it was pre-Infinity uh, War. So there was still buildup to a certain thing. And so people had heard Captain Marvel was going to play a big role in Infinity War and Endgame. And so like they went to go see the movie because they thought, you know, oh, I have to see this in order to, you know, get to the big buildup. But since then, you know, uh, Brie Larson uh, basically shot herself in the foot, uh, turned most of the uh, at least male demographic of Marvel fans against her. And with this movie that's coming out, you have two characters that if you haven't been watching the Marvel TV shows on Disney Plus, you have no idea who they are. And right. it's, it's like if, if one annoying female superhero wasn't enough, now you have three annoying female <laughs> superheroes teaming up against a non-threatening female villain. Um, and supposedly it also dovetails in with a secret invasion, which I, I never finished. I got three episodes Awful. in and I was like, I can't, I can't watch this show anymore. It's just they're, they're destroying Sam Jackson's character. It was really um, horrible. Yeah. And so like this is coming off the heels of a terrible miniseries buildup. And characters nobody likes, actresses nobody likes. And Marvel, or uh, I should say Disney, spent $270 million, But they're saying like, oh, we got 50000 or $50 million in tax credits by shooting in the UK, which is the only reason that we know about this figure because the UK's reporting systems are different. But still, like, in order to break even, this movie has to make at least $500 million, right? Just to break even. Yeah, I don't even think it's going to hit that because if you look at the the track record, like Ant Man, Quantum Butthole, uh, they they only made around like four hundred million dollars in, in in their initial release. So the question now becomes: Did Disney spend too much money on this movie? And what's going yes, to be the, of Marvel? Now, Brian, you're our DC expert. You know, you, you like to dive down. I don't know about that. Yeah. You, you you have a channel about DCEU, uh, but I want to get your take on on this. 
Can you believe that they spent this much money on a Brie Larson movie? That is a lot of money to spend. On uh, like what what what? Where did the money go? It didn't like it couldn't have gone to the actors, right? It didn't didn't go to like the people no one knows or cares about unless they're watching Disney Plus. I don't know. It's um, is she is Brie Larson getting that Robert Downey Jr. Uh, uh, RDJ money now or what? No. Ah, I mean it's it's crazy that this this movie should never have been made because who is it made for? The tiny percentage of people that are watching all the Disney Plus crap because most people aren't. In fact, people that watch Secret Wars, a lot of them may not have watched Miss Marvel. <laughs> and I guarantee you there are Miss Marvel fans like my kids watch Miss Marvel because it was like for kids who can't watch secret wars <laughs> like the crossover is sort of nuts um it just doesn't make any sense that the, this amount of money you have to just assume that there is some kind of fishy accounting going on and i i, I don't know what you could possibly spend this this cash on vfx wouldn't do it um the act the, the cast doesn't account for it like n- none of it makes sense um, that amount of money doesn't make sense for this type of movie. It just doesn't. And you're guaranteed you're going to lose money because you're, you're making it for, you have no cross pollination between, you know, uh, uh, fans and people don't, they, most people don't really like Brie Larson's Captain Marvel as it is. So I don't know how, uh, how they expect to make their money back. Yeah. I think, a, a big portion of the budget probably went for, uh, towards reshoots and you know union dues and all that other stuff um but hypnotic i know that you've checked out of disney star wars but what about disney marvel do you still care no not at all <laughs> no but uh, i just say it as a joke no like um i was heavily invested in the mcu and um at least the initial version of the mcu um and i started kind of seeing the writing on the wall from when they were doing certain they, they were doing certain articles like they were talking about certain things when um when endgame was about to come out and like oh you know just because endgame is happening stay excited we have all these plans you know uh, uh for diversity and all this other nonsense that they're gonna do in phase four and they really they, they went full throttle like they, these people are just incapable of, of practicing self-control and that's the worst thing about it because they went from the original mcu all the way to phase four and it's like oh, is this the same thing are these the same people? Is this is this even the same studios? Like, how is this even possible? Um, and I think they also had an over reliance or or an over expectation of how successful they were going to be on streaming. That was a big thing. Um, they thought that they were going to be massively successful with these TV shows, and they realized very quickly that's not the case. Um, so I think, kind of going back to what you said before, uh, I think that the original Captain Marvel did a billion dollars simply because it ha- it had. Um, it had a lot going for it, right? It was part of a very epic story that a lot of people went to go see the movie simply because they felt like they had to, right? And now she doesn't have that kind of staying power. So for me, I'm a little checked out on Disney Marvel at this point in time simply because where they decided to take the direction. And the thing is, they have no direction, right? It's kind of it's kind of like piggybacking on before where you have TV shows meant for kids, you have TV shows meant for adults. How the hell are you going to tell them in the same universe? I have no idea. That doesn't make any sense. You know, I, I can't even believe that Secret Wars takes place in the same world as Miss Marvel. That just doesn't that doesn't really compute. Right. That mm-hmm. it, it just doesn't it doesn't go together. So if you're trying to I, I don't know if they have the direction necessary to take it to the another another 10 years. I just don't. You know, and I think I think they're going to heavily rely on the mutants. I think they're going to heavily rely on the nostalgia of the mutants, the original X-Men movies and everything. And I think people are curious to see where Marvel takes um, the mutant cinematically, because if you looked at their next phase, I think it's all almost mutant based, right? I I, I believe Did, didn't they announce that recently or showcase that? I mean, that, that would make sense, I mean, honestly. Like it's all mutant that. movies. It's like all these solo films and everything. It's 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 heavily mutant based. So I think they're going. I think they're going to have an over reliance on that. I love the X Men, so I, I I think I will at least be curious. But da, will, na, na, na. Absolutely. But I will never, never in my wildest dreams ever give them any kind of view that doesn't have an eyebrow raised. Right. Like I'm I'm always gonna be looking at it like, all right, when are you when are you gonna when are you gonna F it up? Come on, I know it's coming. 
You know what I mean? Like, I know it's coming eventually. And I kind of feel that way about One Piece, too. Not to bring back One Piece, but I do. Because it's still Netflix at the end of the day. So I'm still watching it with, like, an eyebrow raise. Like, yeah, this is great. Mm-hmm. But when are you going to? I know it's coming. Come on, give it to me. Mm-hmm. I'm expecting it already. I'm waiting for it. Like, I, 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 almost, I almost want it to happen at that point, right? Which is so, sad because nobody ever wants anything to be bad. Yeah. Um, but so, that's, where uh, we're, that's where we're at. So Matt Vader, um, mm-hmm. I think a big issue with the Marvel, especially considering the fact that they spent like close to $300 million on it, is the fact that they're not marketing it very well. Like like no. the, the trailers for this thing have been very underwhelming. And, you know, I got a lot of uh, fire for my tweet about um, the uh, Birds of Prey movie where I was I was saying it's lacking sex appeal because the major <laughs> demographic for superhero movies are young men. And so like when you have a movie uh, that's all female, right? And none of the the female characters are all that attractive or appealing to mm-hmm. young men, the young men demographic. <laughs> People just don't want to watch it, right? Because right. because like you know, superhero uh, the comic books. The reason comic books were successful is because for nerdy kids, it was a, a fantasy. It was an escapist fantasy. It's like if you have a female superhero, it's because like you want to bang them, right? <laughs> like like like, mm-hmm. like that. That's the reason that young men were interested in the female superheroes, yep. and they wanted to be suppose so. you know, the yeah. male superheroes, right? I mean, you're not wrong. And, 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 and so, like, the issue here is that this movie was made for feminists, and they make up maybe, yeah. like, a fraction of a percent of the, the movie-going superhero right. fan base. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know why Disney decided to spend so much money on such a niche movie. Do you have any ideas about, like, you know, what, what you think this movie is going to do? Um, no, not really. I don't think this movie is going to make any money. I'll tell you that much. Um, I think this movie is going to come in somewhere probably around the the last Ant-Man movie as far as what kind of money it brings in. Probably less because um, Brie Larson has a terrible reputation. And, you know, nobody has watched these these Disney Plus shows that you had had to to watch to do the homework for to watch this movie. Um, Mm -hmm. These aren't characters that people want to see people that this is they're hard to resonate with you know um they're just not characters people care about it's like the blue beetle thing we all knew blue beetle wasn't going to make money because blue yep. beetles some bullshit d-list character in the dc universe that nobody gives a shit about <laughs> and it's the same way with these characters you, you know these aren't spider-man or the X Men, or or Captain America, or whatever, you know. Um, and you, you add that together with just the disdain people have for the Marvel world as a whole right now. I mean, let's face it they're they're not making good movies right now. They're they're all formulaic, and they're just a bunch of of weak scripts with a bunch of splashy CGI effects on the screen. You, you know. Um, there used there there was a time when I might have gone to see this movie simply because of the Sam Jackson factor, or but um, I, after watching Secret Invasion and I did watch the whole thing, um, I just don't really care about his character all that much anymore. That made me want to watch this movie even less. Yeah, you actually hurt so a character that was you you hurt, unhurtable. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. So yeah, I don't have any hope that this movie is going to make any decent money it's probably going to come in around between 350 400 million if it's lucky i think that's pretty fair mm-hmm. yeah if it's lucky so and yeah. besides it's going to be on disney plus in three weeks after it's out anyway so <laughs> I'll, I'll watch yeah. it then yeah uh, real quick a uh, big shout out to william forbes for gifting us five more salty nerd nice. podcast nice. memberships we've we've hit our goal of 20 20- <laughs> for the live stream thank you so much mr forbes uh mike i i want to throw this to you on, on a little bit of the financial side because because you and your your buddy bob Iger hashtag dang it bob uh basically uh bob Iger came out and said that uh disney's going to be taking some austerity measures they're going to be scaling back on how much they're spending on content and kevin feige came out in this forbes article uh, and actually said that uh they're going to be uh making less marvel tv shows with less money uh, but they're going to be giving more emphasis on them, which is basically trying to put a, a big, you know, a positive spin on the fact that, you know, they're they're getting less money to make less content. Um, but the idea here is that, okay, we're going to focus on fewer shows throughout the year. 
spend less money and try to up the quality of those things. So what's your take on Disney's strategy here on spending less money on content when the Marvels costs close to $300 million? Well, I think it's vastly hypocritical and financially ignorant um, on a multitude of levels, but I'll just do a couple themes. One is that, you know, when you look at this, this is obviously Kevin's got a soft spot somewhere for Brie Larson. To even green We've heard rumors about that. And uh, I am in staunchly in the camp that he literally has a not a soft spot that's not always soft for Brie <laughs> Larson, if you know what I mean, wink, wink. So, um, and I think putting all these characters together is the diversity play of Disney. Like they couldn't somehow bring themselves to put out just a movie with a white blonde chick out. Uh, and that's why we've got what we've got. Now I watch the Marvels and you know, it's a fun family kid type of movie uh, series. So I didn't have that many problems with it for what it was. Um, I think it's going to fail. I don't think it's going to make any financial sense. Uh, this company has to pull back on all of its spending across the board because it's foolhardy. There, there is no amount of money. Oops, my phone's ringing. There's no amount of money that they can spend to try to buy subs. And that's what they're trying to do with Disney+. Plus. It's obviously been the, their best shot were two things for Disney+. Plus: Spending money on Star Wars and releasing some things on Disney+, Plus that got subs. subs. And number two is putting out cool shows that that complemented the Marvel Cinematic Universe that would provide a return on investment in terms of sub counts and recurring revenue. Neither one of those two things happens. There's there, you know, there's no one's interested in either of the two. Whether you are a Marvel super fan, that is Wayne. If you're a Star Wars super fan, that's Wayne. And so when Kevin Feige sits back, he's in absolute preservation mode because he's fighting for whatever views that he can get to make him make sure that he, what he's in charge of, which is the Marvel properties, are relevant. This film is going to fail, and whatever they put out, I think no one cares to watch it more because when they were spending more money and supposedly trying to get our, our eyeballs on screen, none of it ever, ever worked. I mean, you've heard it already in this panel, and that's going to continue to continue to go for, happen going forward. Yep. All right, guys, we had a lot to talk about today, and we talked about it. I want to thank our fantastic panel of nerds for showing up and giving us their insight. Uh, Mr. No YouTuber, not a YouTuber, Mexican Iron Man, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with our chat, and where can people find more of you? Well, um, occasionally I'm on Midnight's Edge, Midnight's Edge After Dark, but I want, to, I, want, I want to encourage people to become members. If any of you have been gifted a membership to this channel, Re make sure you renew because YouTube won't renew you automatically. And these guys do a fantastic job of making members feel special. So uh, I highly encourage you, those of you that aren't members to sign up and those of you that got gifted memberships, as someone who's been here from the beginning, make sure that you uh, membership has its benefits. And these guys do a great job of making you feel important as a member. So that's what I want to shout out. Thanks. Well, man. thank you for that, Mike. Yeah, we, we release new YouTube members content every Monday. So if you uh, have a membership, uh, be on the lookout for our uh, member uh, special episodes every Monday. Uh, and if you've missed any of them or if you just got a membership today, just check out our members playlist on our homepage at saltynerdvideo.com. Takes you right to our YouTube homepage. And you can watch all the previous stuff as well. Uh, Hypnotic, thank you so much for your first time here on the Salty Nerd Podcast. Do you have any final thoughts and where can people find more of you? Yeah, man. Uh, thank you guys for having me. It was awesome, as expected. You know, I've been I've been looking forward to this, and I'm glad it, it finally happened. Uh, in terms of final thoughts, uh, yeah, just don't be afraid to be a bigot. If people call you a bigot, embrace it. You know, it's basically a great title these days, and I I have embraced it fully. Uh, if you want to find more of me, you can find me on my channel, Hypnotic. It's at Hypnotic with two Cs because some douche stole the one with one C, <laughs> so I have to use two Cs. Um, yeah. You can find me there. I do videos every single day. I've never missed a video, uh, two videos a day, and a live stream every Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you want to find more, you can find me there. And thanks. I appreciate you guys having me. It was awesome. Yeah, and Thank link you. to Hypnotic's channel is in the description if you guys want to check him out and give him a sub or a follow or a like. All that stuff is is A-OK -okay with us. And Brian from the Popcast, do you have hey. any final thoughts? And what's going on with you guys? Um, <clears throat> We got a... Uh... We got a big doc coming out pretty soon next week. We're working on it nonstop. We got a little delayed because I was sick. Um, we're do we're back and doing our show. We're back at doing our show every Thursday. 
We're considering adding another day to our show to maybe do two twice a week because we're gluttons for uh, punishment. Because uh, even though we're not making a single penny off of it, we still want to have fun and uh, and talk to people. Um, and that's about it. You can find us at the podcast, uh, youtube.com slash the podcast or youtube.com slash the podcast live. Both of those are channel. We also have a DC channel. Go hit one of our channels. You'll see all the links. All right. And real quick, before we get to Matt Vader, William Forbes for $20. They spent how much on Captain Marvel? I watched <laughs> the Miss Marvel with my preteen niece, but she didn't even like it. Yeah. The Marvel train was saying the first one was required viewing. This will have the same results as the WNBA. I don't think he's go. wrong, Matt. <laughs> no, he's not. And also, not wrong. no money G for $10. No Great money G. Show, guys. Salty Justice Warrior emoji. Thank, Thank you. you. No money G. It's great. That's awesome. All right, Matt Vader74, what do we got going on on the Salty Nerd channel this week? Oh, God, what do we got going on? Uh, we have this our weekly review for this terrible show on Apple TV called Invasion. Don't watch it. Don't watch that show. Watch us review it. It's much more fun. The show is terrible, guys. It's it's fucking awful. It's, it's like the worst watch, show. Man. It's the worst show out there. But <laughs> it is it, it is kind of fun to talk about because it, it is that bad. Um, also, uh, this week I believe we have our review of that classic Jason Statham, Sylvester Stallone, and every action star on the sun, The Expendables movie the first movie the expendables has come we're, we're doing a review on that that was fun to watch it was fun to talk about and that'll be out on friday um brian before i get going um you and i are gonna have to take a little bit of time together and we're gonna have to discuss your bullshit star trek list okay um, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have time to do that today but if you wow. haven't seen that video guys go over to podcast boys and, and check that list out it's nonsense it's not my work. fault. I I, yeah. um, I can't control what the numbers yeah. say, bro. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, thousand yeah. sources went into that. <laughs> it's not. It's not me. And uh, I want to thank Mike for being here. It's always a pleasure having you on the show, man. Appreciate you and Hypnotic. It was awesome getting to know you and talk to you a little bit. I'm a, big, I'm a fan you, of your man. show and your channel, and um, it's it's great having you. And I hope you want to come back. We'll, we'll have you back at some point for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And uh, just want to remind everyone that uh, we uh, live stream every Saturday and Tuesday. Tuesday is at 2 o'clock Pacific time, 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And uh, basically, uh, that's the one where the whole crew gets together, plus Nadia from the Inside All Day podcast. And we talk about all types of fun stuff. So uh, if you guys uh, want to help uh, check us out on Tuesdays, we'd really appreciate that. Go to saltynerdlive.com to see when our next live stream is coming up or, or look at our past live streams. That website will take you all the way uh, through our live stream schedule. And uh, and we'd love to see you in the chats. Um, real quick, we also want to give a big shout out once again to new father Odin, uh, who had a baby girl uh, the other day. And uh, we're sending him all the love and respect and best wishes for his uh, new entry into his family. Uh, look forward to having him back, but it probably won't be for a while because the baby's going to require a little bit of attention over there. But I want to also thank uh, Jillian N and William Forbes for the generosity of gifting all those subs. Guys, if you got a gifted sub, be sure to go and check out the members content on the channel and let us know what you think about it. Uh, we've got a lot of ideas for members only content. So we want to get that out there for you guys. And we love hearing feedback on that stuff. And I also want to give a shout out to everyone who was so generous and donated today. The Joker's Voice, Bob Dorsey, William Forbes, Mexican Iron Man, The Dork Knight, Whiskey Jack, and Fluffy Panda, along with No Money G. Guys, thank you so much for giving us uh, your support. We really appreciate it. Again, our goal for the past couple of years has been to start earning enough on this channel so that Matt Vader and Alex can quit their terrible day jobs and come join us full time. Someday making content and interacting with you guys and having a good old time. So thank you all so much for the support. Every little bit that you give goes towards that effort. And we really, really appreciate it. Uh, next week. Uh, go ahead, Matt. I was going to say, follow us on rumble. We do have a rumble channel over there. We had 43 people watching this over there today. I was shocked. We did not nice. expect that because I have not been pimping it out at all, but that's thank great. You, uh, thank you to our rumble watchers over there. We appreciate you guys. Salt dog. Uh, Pestry Dukes, uh, Pied Piper Plays, and all everybody else over there. Appreciate you guys a lot. So, yeah, we also had people watching us on Facebook. Appreciate that. We saw some of you in the chat, but we're not able to respond, 
because uh, of the way StreamYards works. But we're also on mm-hmm. Kick, Twitch, and uh, Odyssey. Oh, and well. OnlyFans. Don't forget that. And OnlyFans, yeah. Nice. Feet, Grindr, feet, feet Finder. Yeah, Feet, feet Finder. Not a yeah. sponsor. Feet finder. Yeah. Uh, Grindr. All, all good stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thank you guys all so much uh, for tuning in today. And tune in next Saturday, same salty time, same salty channel, where we're going to have Stuttering Craig on as our guest panelist. And uh, hopefully uh, maybe Mexican Iron Man can rejoin us uh, next week as well if he if his schedule permits. Uh, otherwise, we will have someone else sitting in for Odin. Uh, but until then, guys, everyone, thank you all so much for being here. And stay salty, my friends. Bye.